This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map Forgotten Forest for day two of East versus West. On the east side of the map, representing Team East for this 2v2, this is Drive. The yellow GDI, the cyan GDI, why this is Futurama. Drive and Futurama back at it, unified as a team and representing the East. Meanwhile, representing Team West as the pink marked of Kane, give it up for Dimitri. And as the third GDI playing red, this is Bike Rush Owns. All right, it is day two of East versus West from May 15th. If you did not catch the action, well, I'm going to be talking spoilers because we have got to get up to speed with where the score is. So it'll be linked in the description and your warning is now over. If you saw the first day of East versus West, what do we have going here? Okay. War Factory was powered down just a smidge early. I feel like people normally power it down after the refinery is placed so that the power plant builds a smidge faster. But in this case, Dimitri does whatever he wants because after his performance last week versus this guy, Futurama, Dimitri can do whatever he wants, even blocking that MCV just a little bit, causing it to glitch out, body blocking the MCV, going down for the expansion, with the buggy. Dimitri going 4-3 against Futurama, barely beating him out. Bike Rush owns 4-0ing drive in his series. And of course, uh, Phoenix and Masterleaf going 4-2 in their series versus Shock Trepid and Eclipse. Yes, Team West brought it home with a 3-0 lead. Now, there are six matches lined up for East versus West. If it's a tie, we go to a seventh tiebreaker match. But with the phenomenal opening of East versus West last week, it would be pretty surprising if they are not able to bring it home in these three matches. Team East needs to win every series that we see today and take home the final match to be able to claim the $400 prize for their team. That is right, courtesy of Big Mole, Enders, and myself, there is $500 up for grabs. Drive with a bunch of pit bulls in the north, Futurama with pit bulls in the south, putting a little bit of pressure on Bike Rush and on Dimitri. Three best of sevens is what we're going to be checking out today. We've got uh, Drive and Futurama versus Dimmy and Bike Rush. And then we have Master Leaf versus Shock Trepid. And uh, we'll see about the last match after that. But three best of sevens. And we're kicking it off with the 2v2 as Drive skates through Bike Rush and Dimitri's base. He's looking for that opening. He's looking for those harvesters. He's going to be met by APCs and bread tanks in the south. Lots of GDI in this match, but the first harvester that's going to go down will be Mark Kane. Barely drive does manage to get it. Harvester hunting is the game and actually transitioning down. Dimitri sends into the jaws of the beast. Another harvester. The pit bulls just barely not enough rockets to finish it off until finally there they get it. Futurama in the middle of the map going to steal some of that blue Tiberium. His own pit bulls have not found much purchase. And in the south, Drive and Futurama teching up and setting up their expansion down there. Bike Rush Owns has not been hobbled yet this game. He has got to play how he wants, and that is a dangerous place to be. And you really need to have the ability to shut Bike Rush down, to slow him up, and to stop him from progressing. But in this particular case, they just have not been able to cut down Bike Rush at the knees. 
Dimitri has taken the brunt of the damage, but he's still going to be able to fast tech. Well, not really fast tech at this point. He's teching pretty regularly, but he is still going to be able to activate those one clicks. He's going to be able to do economic damage. However, these Pred APC coming in from Futurama, he's going to catch Bike Rush a little bit unawares. I don't know if he'll totally get the Harvester, but yes, he does. Bike Rush owns getting completely shut down and ravaged in the south. Bike Rush owns unable to see that coming. He loses out his army. And now the Pitbulls super committing to this attack, sacrificing themselves perhaps more than they actually need to. Futurama, I don't know if he has enough stuff to really take on Sonic Emitters and the defense of Bike Rush Owns. Firehawks are trying to clear out those hammerheads. Uh, what does Bike Rush actually have on the ground here? The answer seems to be not a whole lot. These Predator tanks actually feel he's faced almost no opposition, just two Sonic Emitters. Now there's an Obelisk being added into the mix, and that will push back this army. One, two Sonic Emitters. That can be dealt with. But with the Obelisk, it becomes a lot more difficult. Bike Rush owns losing Harvester after Harvester. I'm actually not sure who is playing on Bike Rush's account right now because Bike Rush owns is getting thrashed. His MCV taking a ton of damage and Futurama continuing to steal that blue Tiberium. It looks like Drive in the North putting on a bit of pressure himself. He's actually going to be sniping the Tech Lab, forcing the cancellation of that upgrade. He's going to get another Harvester or he's going to get the Operations Center. Either one is a good target and Dimitri and Bike Rush owns are faltering under under the pressure, the multi-MCV of Dimitri hasn't had much of an opportunity to get started. Bike Rush owns, trying to recuperate. He's trying to reorient himself. Firehawks coming through for another pass. Drive behind all of this, taking the center green Tiberium field in the north. Juggernauts are here. Sonic emitters are here. Bike Rush owns and Dimitri are trying to stabilize, but they are way down on economy from where they would like to be. Drive continuing to eat more and more of this green Tiberium field. He's only got a couple of harvesters here. We did hear a Marv audio cue play out. It looks like it's Futurama, double zone trooper, double engineer inside of it. And Forgotten Forest often is decided by who is able to control and utilize the center green Tiberium fields, the contested fields. Another Sonic emitter does get deployed. This is a fairly expensive defense for these guys. Multiple Sonic emitters and an obelisk. I guess the obelisk was there earlier. And the Pitbulls managed to find a little bit of space where it's at least harder for that Sonic Emitter to hit them. They do dodge the shots there. And in the north, Predator Tanks still trying to find their damage. Unfortunately for Drive, he hasn't quite been able to land the damage in the north that he wanted. He got a good bit of damage earlier. One more Harvester will go down. Dimitri having a real tough time keeping his Harvesters online, but Bike Rush owns has gotten the Marv. His Zone Troopers aren't inside just yet, but Futurama is here. He's loaded with Engineers. He's loaded with Zone Troopers. He's got the Juggernauts as well. Watchtower gets deployed. Uh, one Avatar in the north just slowly picking off these Predator tanks one by one. Juggernauts not targeting down those, the Juggernauts or the Marv of Bike Rush owns. A bit of a mistake here. Futurama letting his Juggernauts just auto attack a random rifle squad. Meanwhile, Bike Rush owns recomposes himself and reorients towards the middle of the map. Shockwave Artillery is ready to fire off. Bike Rush owns is going to catch the Marv. He's going to catch the Juggernauts. He gets the RNG that he needs and return fire misses the Marv. How does he do it? The RNG misses Bike Rush's Marv. He gets all four of the Juggernauts. Meanwhile, his own Juggernauts take a healthy bit of damage, but as Marv survives the fight, his own Juggernauts are being revitalized. Engineer coming online. EMP locks down Futurama's Marv. It's in range of all four or all five of Bike Rush's Juggernauts. Firehawks coming in, ready to bomb something out of existence, but Futurama's Marv will go down. The EMP secures the kill.
Bike Rush owns now has the front line. His own Marv gets eliminated. He's got the War Factory right there on the front line, but it's double Sonic Emitter in range of the Juggernauts. Orca Strike comes through. Double Juggernaut going down. The MCV repositioning engineers here on the front line, but it's Zone Troopers from Bike Rush owns to secure the kills. Kills on the Husks. Kills on the Juggernauts as well. The Sonic Emitters still doing so much work. Futurama is going to make it happen with just Sonic Emitters. Meanwhile, in the north, it's Juggernauts versus the Redeemer, and the Redeemer with the bikes on the north side. But the GG gets called. And I actually... Bike Rush Owns was the first one to tap out there. He's the one with the actual skull, so then that means that Bike Rush Owns and Dimitri took the loss there. They were beginning to crumble. Drive and Futurama starting off this series with a 1-0 victory which sends us on to unsound investment for game number two in the north as the orange marked of cane this is dimitri an amazing performance from dimitri versus futurama truly stellar and he's here to follow it up with a 2v2 but that game number one performance not as stellar as the red GDI, it's Bike Rush owns. And Team East on the south side of the map as the yellow GDI, this is Drive. Looking good with that harassment and that 1-0 opener. Of course, the fourth player as the Cyan GDI, this is Futurama. Big shout out to Big Mole for organizing this entire event. Super cool concept, super cool games that we are getting to see. And also putting up uh, $200 of his own money to start that prize pool off, get it funded. Big thanks to Enders for coming in with the last minute funding as well. That's just a guy who likes Kane's Wrath and was like, hey, I enjoy watching Kane's Wrath. I've gotten a lot of enjoyment. I want to throw some money towards a prize pool. Ended up donating 150 bucks to it and uh, giving us these awesome games. I mean, week one, yeah, there was, uh, there was that one match. But overall, week one had some phenomenal matches in it. Individual maps and some great series back and forth and... Really good twists and turns. But now we're starting off day number two. Team East taking a strong lead, showing that they are here to bring it. Look at that calling back the Harvester a smidge early because he wants the extra cash. There are some times where the timing does make sense. Uh, if you have some critical infrastructure that is constructing and you want to make sure that it finishes as quickly as possible, you don't necessarily need 100% of the Tiberium from that Harvester. So you call it back a moment early and you get that money, you know, several seconds earlier and you keep your cash flowing. Light Scouts from just about every player. We saw Futurama with the Rifle Scout earlier going for Dimitri. Drive on the south side of the map with a couple of Pit Bulls. I think Bike with some Riflemen as well. A couple of Rockets inside of these APCs. Second Rocket going to jump inside of that APC. Bikes are here to push away. Drive somehow got a Rifle Squad all the way on the north side of the map. He went all the way up north. Laser turret gets dropped down. Futurama will be pushed away for the current moment. And from here, it looks like everyone just kind of following a pretty normal path build-wise into some Predator tanks for drive. Futurama drops a second war factory at his natural rather than a second refinery. So a bit more production focus. Bike Rush Owns goes for the tech and a barracks. So a bit of a mix-up from Bike Rush Owns, but he likes those Pred APCs. We saw this in the last match as well. He likes going for the extra rocket squads to really pump that up. And also, he actually gets a Grenadier squad to be able to break those bunkers. And it's going to be Pitbulls versus Pitbulls. Bike Rush Owns is committing hard to the attack, but he's going triple rocket into the bunker. That is a great move by Bike Rush Owns. He sees the airfield coming in from Drive. Drive loves his orcas. He loves his hammerheads. Calls in the orca strike. 
He's here to break that bunker and to shut it down, but that is such a killer move from Pike Rochelle. Clears out the bunker with the Grenadier Squad and then takes it with triple rockets. If he had a couple of more units, he would have been able to keep up that firepower a little bit longer. Futurama and... Oh, Bike Rush Owens, what are you doing, buddy? He can't deploy because of the uneven terrain, I think. Bike Rush Owens having to reverse move out of it. His FCV goes down. Drive gets the kill. That's the shutdown. But it's actually a multi-MCV play because somewhere else, Bike Rush Owens has an MCV. I'm not sure where. Okay, so he actually was going multi-MCV Sonic Emitter. Killing that MCV doesn't end the game for Bike Rush Owens like it almost would have if it was a single MCV play. But it's multi-MCV as far as the eye can see from Team West in the north. Bike Rush Owens trying to follow that up with an Orca Strike. Going to come in and hunt some Harvesters. He will get the kill on that Harvester, but he will pay the price with the Orca. Definitely worth it for Bike Rush Owens. Dimitri and Futurama not quite as heavy battling. And I think no MCV's getting sniped, but these bikes are going to get the jump on the pit bulls. Enough bikes to really push these pits back, but with the Predator tanks in the north, it makes it a bit harder of a proposition. Harvester going in to steal that blue Tiberium in the corner. Bike Rush owns, perhaps not able to secure that blue Tiberium as Drive heads over there. Bike Rush owns Sonic Emitter Strike was not able to uh, go off as planned. Futurama's got his own multi-MCV play. He's ready with the Sonic Emitters. He's got the laser fence already around that tech center. And Bike Rush owns now has a bit of pressure to deal with. It's Pitbulls in the north. Meanwhile, at the natural expansion, it's Predator tanks spreading out. Hunting Harvesters, but also Juggernauts. They see the Reclamator hub. They don't know that that Marv is only a third of the way down, but there's another Sonic Emitter added on. One Juggernaut goes down. Harvesters getting repaired. Drive probably needs to just commit to the kill of the Harvester. I don't know if he's really getting out of here as bikes come in from the backside and smash Drives. Pitbulls. Orca Strike barely tagging one of those Harvesters, but that is three Harvesters from Bike Rush Owns, barely still alive. The Redeemer is out on the field, really. This is a 1v1 in the north and a 1v1 in the south. There's been so little team play, but a little bit here and a little bit there. Juggernaut from Drive, there to scare off those bikes. Shockwave artillery firing off somewhere. It misses its mark. Barely Dimitri's Redeemer steps out of the way. Juggernauts and Marv marching forward. Rage Gen perhaps has already fired off. The Obelisk is here. Dimitri fires off the Rage Gen, but everything has already been given the attack command. The EMP is unneeded as Juggernauts fall, but the Redeemer is getting dangerously low. Vertigo's coming in, but it's too little, too late. Futurama is here in mass. Zone Troopers pushing forward. The Marv getting cut out from the battle a little bit. Magnetic Mind takes a big chunk out of that Marv health. Zone Troopers getting shredded. Dimitri's front line has been broken. His avatars pull back to a safer location. Four avatars hiding behind the Redeemer engineering facility. Engineer coming up, no maybe more zone troopers as the Sonic Emitter comes online and the Engineer for the recovery of the Juggernaut Husks. Dimitri is under siege. Bike Rush Owns is nowhere to be seen, but there's going to be the return fire. The Shockwave Artillery lands. Every single Juggernaut gets locked down. The Vertigos finish off. The Marb and the Avatars close in. Futurama's front line has been shattered, but it hasn't been broken. Two more juggernauts down. Zone troopers on the reinforcement path as two avatars get sniped in one go. One remaining avatar in Dimitri desperately trying to get out another redeemer, trying desperately to get out more defense. Futurama needs to focus down at that Redeemer Engineering Facility, snipes the husk, the Sonic Emitters get deployed, and Dimitri is about to finish whatever he's building. 
Oh, the stealth tower, the Redeemer engineering facility will finish the Redeemer and the Juggernaut smash it down. No, they get it. They get it. Futurama kills the Redeemer as it's on the pad. Engineers rushing into Juggernauts one after the other and Dimitri needs help. Deni Dimitri needs assistance, but Bike Rush Owens is being kept busy by drive in the south. Team East is bringing their A game here to this 2v2. The obelisk gets annihilated. Too pro, too fast, too good. Bike Rush Owens has been defeated and Dimitri leaves the game again. Drive and Futurama are having a repeat performance from the 2v2 team last week. Drive and Futurama opening up with a strong 2-0. Team East opening up with the 2-0 last week in the 2v2 as well. Can they follow it up with games 3 and 4? That question will be answered here on Pipeline Fusion the 2v2 variant of pipeline problems and i hope you like gdi because we have a lot of gdi in this game as the red gdi in the north this is bike rush owns his teammate on the east side as the blue gdi it's dimitri and i mean you try the Mark of Cain thing for a couple of games. If it doesn't quite work out, I guess your only option is to pivot over towards GDI as the Cyan in the South representing Team East. It's Futurama. And of course, that leaves as the fourth member, the Yellow, playing GDI. It's Drive. Team East is looking beast for the first two games of this series but it is a best of seven it is bike rush on the other side and bike rush is one of those guys who has been able to complete a reverse sweep a reverse all kill be o3 down and then bring it back to win it all dimitri with an amazing performance last week well in that case he kind of just got ahead and stayed ahead for the most part Futurama coming through the center of the map. It's a four-way GDI mirror, and the scouting squads have kind of gone in each direction. On the outside, it looks like Bike Rush and Dimitri were able to win. Through the middle of the map, Futurama had those two scouts, so it seems like, you know, everyone is sort of getting through in the end, either in the middle of the map or on the outside. Double power, uh, double tip spike goes to Futurama in between the bases. Meanwhile, Bike Rush and Dimitri split them in the north. Futurama scouts really didn't make it very far through the middle. They did eventually get their way into the base of Dimitri. Command Post comes in from Bike Rush Owns. This is always a bit of a weird map, but Command Post comes in from Drive as well. And there's the scan going down somewhere, so when you hear the scan, you know that your opponent's got the command post, and that kind of equals out the timing for everyone else. They're all kind of on even footing for the most part. Dimitri maybe went an extra refinery before the command post, and it's pipeline problems, but a little bit different, so it's always a little bit weird to find how this one works out. With that blue Tiberium, with the crane openers, it plays a bit differently than the other maps. Orca Strike coming in. Drive has the airfield, and that has been telegraphed. He is also going for the tech center behind that. So he's keeping that crane, and he's making use of that blue Tiberium. He may be selling off the crane relatively soon, but he's got at least one more structure he wants to get out before he goes there. Bike Rush owns down 0-2. Might be looking to start off this third game with a bit more aggression. His patented APC rockets at this point. He's been very consistent with those in this particular series. Futurama with a couple of units on the outside of the map. Multi-MCV Sonic Emitter might be the way to go. We'll see who really commits to that. Futurama with a couple of pit bulls. Hunting some potential blue harvesters. This isn't about killing the blue. It's about denying the harvesters the transfer to another field. 
They are going to get at least one Harvester. The second Harvester is also going to be under threat down in the south. Dimitri pressuring one of the fields of Futurama a little bit here. Futurama getting a bit caught up. Those pit bulls not quite getting a clean transfer and that Harvester being able to drive a little bit further away. Bike Rochon's going to be trying to go, to go for the transition down in the south. Drive putting on a bit of pressure, but it's not much at all couple of tanks, couple of firehawks, not enough to break anything down. Pitbulls going for the harvesters somewhat unopposed. Orca Strike could be useful here if Dimitri had gone for that, but no, he's not able to do it. He instead cleans them up just with his own pits. One harvester super low on health will survive, and Futurama will not get another kill. Marv comes out for Bike Rush. Gets the sell-off of the Reclamator hub that got bombed a little bit earlier. Firehawks not finding their mark by ending that Marv. And the MCV getting chased away. Bike Rush going to have to run for the hills with that MCV. Dimitri going to find it difficult to take his own third base because Futurama is already set up on it. Looking to take revenge for that series last week. Drive and Futurama both losing their series and they are wanting to take it back. Futurama taking the base. One of his juggernauts gets popped as it pops out of that war factory, but the Sonic Emitter gets deployed right in range. This The Shockwave Artillery is ready to go as well on top of the jugs. It's not in the south to help out Drive. It's here to try and lock down this MCV, lock down those juggernauts as Futurama keeps up the pressure. He's got the better juggernaut numbers, and if he can take the MCV, he can stop the pressure. He can stop the bleeding. Engineer pops on out trying to get inside of that MCV or inside of that Marv, excuse me as the zone troopers come in they're going for the snipe one after the other there's the barracks firing back it's the shockwave artillery from dimitri landing on almost every single one of the remaining juggernauts no mcv but the juggernauts are coming through and dimitri crushes through the army of futurama double barracks to try and go for the cap of the husks but the husks are getting sniped no opposition to these zone troopers watchtower too little too late the damage has been done dimitri steps on forward his chickens are looking for the damage and they're gonna roost futurama's base is devastated mcv no <laughs> marv goes down as the mcv from a bike rush closes in engineers litter the ground dead and waiting as dimitri fights a 1v1 on the right side of the map crushing futurama but futurama has the eco to back it up does dimitri Drive, trying to pivot, trying to hold the line. Bike Rush owns putting a lot of pressure on Drive. Fresh Sonic Emitter gets deployed. The engineers are not going to have any husks to grab. One husk remains as Drive keeps up the pressure. The Sonic Emitter does its damage. The MCV of Futurama falls, but that is at an advanced place. That husk going down as well. Back on the other side of the map, Dimitri looking for the damage with those pit bulls. Zone Trooper gets cleaned up finally. Drive about to lose this Harvester very low on health, but the Husk takes the damage there. Husks getting sniped on both sides. Engineers getting sniped by, by Dimitri. Futurama not going to be able to take those neutral structures. Hammerhead gets eliminated. The Firehawk loaded with those anti-air missiles will find the damage. Sonic Emitter on the front line again from Drive. Orca Strike comes in. Perfect land on that juggernaut. Bike Rush Owns is getting now double teamed as Futurama comes to Drive's aid. I think a second Marv may have just been emerging from a Reclamator hub. Futurama comes in. Supersonic Airstrike misses one, but the Firehawks get him as the Supersonic Airstrike clears the skies. The the hammerheads from Futurama don't find their saving damage. Dimitri coming together. He's joining Bike Rush to try and turn this into a 2v1 on the left side of the map. Drive putting out a couple of rifleman squads. He's throwing everything that he possibly has into this engagement. Futurama and Drive feeding units piecemeal into the waiting arms of Dimitri and Bike Rush owns. Futurama has almost eaten his entire green field. Dimitri has only started on his. The late game economy is 
in the north, it seems. Orchestra comes in on each side, tags harvesters in both directions. Bike Roshone's re-establishing his MCV. Juggernauts are back online for Futurama, taking a couple of loose shots at those. Taking a couple of loose shots at the pit, at the pit bulls. Orchestra going to be coming in. Futurama looking to disrupt the juggernauts of Dimitri. The MCV is going to get sniped. There's the double Sonic emitter to try and get as much splash damage as they can. Engineers waiting in the wings, ready to go as that Sonic emitter gets blasted down. Dimitri with Juggernauts coming on to try and flank, but he's going to pull everything back. Futurama's wall of fire is here. The light is too bright from the muzzle flare of these Juggernauts. Futurama reforming his front line. He's saved drive, but can drive get his feet back under him. His Firehawks have largely been defeated. They haven't bought him as much value as he was hoping. <laughs> Accidental Harvester transfers to the other side of the map for Futurama. Futurama has been in this position once before against Dimitri, and the Zone Trooper play was what saved Dimitri. Bike Roshones gets saved by Dimitri. Uh, random Firehawk firing a couple of missiles, trying to bring down... Oh, that was a zone head! That's an expensive boy to lose as the Harvester gets capped dead in the bay as that Orca Strike finds the luckiest hit of all time. Drive gets lucky there as Bike Roshones tries to prep the zone heads for a game-ending swing through the base of Drive. Bike Rush owns with a couple more hammerheads looking for the damage being guarded by his Firehawks. Harvesters getting targeted. They're low on health, but not low enough. Bike Rush owns not able to win this one outright. He has uh, been faltering in his orchestra. Comes in again, tags another Harvester low on health, but not too low. Bike Roshone's faltering in the 1v1 against Drive. Drive not necessarily winning outright, but uh, finding a bit of damage and Futurama helping to destabilize Bike Roshone's, not letting Bike Roshone's run away with this. The eco of this match has been all over the place. People going really big in the beginning, but now it's just about the Tib regrow. There isn't much money left on the match. Map. Dimitri's got a ton, actually, in this blue Tiberium. He needs to transfer probably two Harvesters over there to grab all of that quickly and then let it regrow again. Blue Tiberium, it might actually be worth letting it regrow. Uh, if you let something regrow for a couple of minutes, it does actually net you more money than if you harvest it constantly. Engineer gets sniped, but Dimitri already has the EMP control center. It will be taken now by Futurama. He's got his hammerhead to watch that. Second engineer pops out for Dimitri. It might just kind of get sniped by this random APC. He's going to commit to the attack. He's going to go deep into enemy territory. A big scouting mission coming through here for Futurama. He's actually just going to send this APC forward. Try and get as much scouting as he can. Firehawks bombing the deck. Drive gets them off the deck just soon enough. The difference between a 1-2 and a 3-0 is what we're looking here, looking at here. Bike Rush owns, has the EMP control center on the left. Futurama has the EMP control center on the right. Juggernauts are defining the armies of every player, basically. Railguns finally purchased for Bike Rush owns, who's got the most diverse army. No Marvs have been seen since Bike Rush's Marv. And it's not a multi-MCV Sonic Emitter play, which is what I was kind of expecting to see. A potential four Sonic Emitters being deployed at once in a 2v2. It's a four-way GDI mirror, and it's going to come down to the wall of fire for each player. Drive is starting to get outmaneuvered. Bike Rush owns looking to pressure from basically every angle. He might be able to strike down this War Factory. No, he passes overhead. He's looking for... 
Drive is actually flying those Firehawks. As Bike Rush Owns comes into the main base of Drive, there's not much defense here. Futurama is here in the sky to clear out the Grenadier Squad, but it's going to be the airfield that goes down as Bike Rush Owns looks for the kill of Drive. Drive's MCV is on the run. He's got this refinery over on the left, the left side still powering his eco. Drive completely backs up. It's about Futurama's total area. And Drive, someone does snipe that EMP control center. I guess at this point, it's a good thing that Futurama has had those two tib spikes this entire time. Futurama says, let's go. I hope he's got some kind of a shockwave artillery or something. It's a wall against a wall. Mass juggernauts, a couple of rocket squads mixed in here. Dimitri brings the Firehawks. There's the shockwave artillery firing off, and it's going to land on the north side. The return fire landing on the south side, missing the MCV, catching it there just in time. Juggernauts frozen in the north. Juggernauts frozen in the south, but it's going to be the zone trooper. Backstab coming in from Dimitri. Bike Rush owns with a couple of rail guns here to try and break up the front line of the army and Futurama falling to pieces. Dimitri standing strong in the north. They don't want the 03 map score. They want to bring it back. Futurama going for the reclaim. The watchtower is getting deployed. Juggernauts and railguns closing in from Bike Rush Owns. He's coming for the swing around to complete the circle and crush Futurama. Team East may be beast mode, but they're not unbeatable as Futurama taps out. Drive is moments away. The score will be 1-2 as Team West fights back for their spot in this series. Bike Rush owns and Dimitri finally clawing their way through in the end, but Dimitri's defense was unbeatable, holding the line against Futurama. Drive tapping out of the resource race pretty early on, really lacking never able to fully saturate that third base and Futurama running ahead with the eco but not enough to 2v1. That'll do it for game number three. Game four awaits. And game four takes us to Tiberium Pantanas for the potential tie up or the match that puts Team East into map point kind of territory. As the green GDI kicking off this four-way mirror, this is Dimitri. His teammate faltering a bit in game number three, but coming through strong in the finish. This is Bike Rush Owns. On the other side of the map, Team East is represented by the yellow GDI Drive. Meanwhile, the powerhouse player of last game, the Cyan GDI, it's Futurama. This best of seven deciding who gets $100 and who gets $400 between these two teams. This map, not super familiar with it. Maybe seen one game on it. Reminds me a touch of Wasteland Dam, but that's more in the tile set and aesthetic than the actual. Is Bike Rush Owns going for an expansion point on the south side of the map? Uh, that's more in the tile set and the aesthetic than the actual layout. We do have a militant hovel near each base, and then a tib spike for each player as well. And a little bit of an expansion triangle here. Dimitri starts on that field, but then he's got a short walk to two more green Tiberium fields. Lots of space to build around them. Meanwhile, Futurama is the one in the south with the short walk. Uh, that engineer is, I guess, going for the Tib Spike. There are a couple of riflemen nearby to keep it safe. Futurama goes for the scout in the north as well. Uh, nope. Bike Jones turns around. He cannot decide what he wants to do with that engineer. Wants to stop drive from diving on top of the engineer, I guess. A little bit of blue Tiberium in the north. A little bit of blue Tiberium in the south. It will be taken by Team East. 
Not necessarily financially the best move, but it does extend out the life of your green and gets you a little bit of Tiberium potentially denied from your opponent. Bike Rush's scouts do get cleaned up, but Bike Rush does eventually still not take anything with this engineer. It's still running along the southern edge of the map. Dimitri forming up his defensive wall of pit bulls. Rifleman taking a couple of shots at drive as he scoots on by. Rifleman is on an intercept path. It looks like Bike Rush has been found out. And the Riflemen are closing the distance. Dimitri taking a bit of a squad in the middle of the map. Taking one of the buildings so that he's got that map presence. Engineer gets sniped. Nice attempt. But Bike Rush owns could have gone for the expansion point. Would have been safer. But less, less flashy. Pitbulls come in. It's going to be a defense from Bike Rush Owns that saves this Harvester. Or it'll be the Juking that barely kills it. And he barely gets the rocket off. One last Pitbull sneaking in from the edge. But that's six, maybe seven Pitbulls traded for the exchange. Drive committing a lot to that attack to get just one Pitbull in exchange. And Bike Rush will now cross the middle of the map and look for revenge. Drive cleans up the foxhole in the middle. His own pit bull's looking to respond. He's going to maybe have to juke around this bit of terrain. The mountain that rises up from the center of the map will protect Drive in this moment. Futurama losing a couple of pits to the exchange in the middle. Dimitri going big with the pits as well. A four-player GDI mirror leads to a lot of pit bulls spread throughout the map. No one has taken the tip spike in the north, and Dimitri is confident of that. Drive splits his pits down to the south. Tech center gets added on for Dimitri. He's going for the tech play there. Meanwhile, it's the Orcas for Bike Rush owns. A little bit of a delay in the tier 3 for Bike Rush, but the trade for the Orcas is probably the right one. We'll see if he's able to cross map in the south. Couple of drives. Pitbulls trying to close in. It's the fight for the one of the center green Tiberium fields. Futurama lazily letting his tanks take the shot of that sonic emitter. Two good blasts coming in there. Bike Rush will defend with his own Pitbulls back at home. His MCV on the move. It's the multi-MCV play as his tier 3 comes online. The sonic emitter hope is alive for everyone. Futurama catches Dimitri on the left side of the map. A couple of pit bulls finding their, their end of their life. Pit bulls poke in for, future, uh, for Drive. He doesn't find much there. I mean, a couple of watchtowers you don't want to be fighting with pit bulls as a general rule. Sonic Hunter goes down, gets one of the pit bulls on the exit. Futurama cresting the north of the map, swinging through, trying to hunt Dimitri to his last days. Futurama closing in. He was never able to get the damage done that he wanted. Pitbulls of Drive still looking for their home, looking for something to do. Reclamator Hub has been seen. MCV is on the way. Orcas hunting Drive's harvesters as Bike Rush owns is going pure insanity mode as he crosses the map. Sonic Emitter getting deployed, completely calling off the attack as Futurama turns to the south and is looking for some kind of an answer to Bike Rush owns Drive all out assault he's gonna have to try and hold the line with his harvesters getting targeted down by sonic emitters futurama comes in for the saving move here as he targets down the sonic emitters a fresh one gets deployed by bike rush owns a fresh two get deployed by bike rush owns the stacking is beautiful there by futurama as bike rushes sonic emitters light up the night annihilating these low tech units Finally, Drive hopes to break through, but Dimitri has the follow-up. Juggernauts assaulting from a distance. The MCV undeployed there as Bike Rush owns. Keeps up the chaos, keeps up the pressure, hunting more harvesters with this Orca, and it's pure Sonic Emitter damage that clears out Drive's expansion. 
The multi-MCV Sonic Emitter Dream is alive as the entire battlefield just turns into pure chaos. Dimitri losing a Juggernaut to a Predator tank as it looks like both sides are going to kind of retreat, but the distance between the bases has been reduced by so much. A random hammerhead from Drive sneaks off to try and find a bit of damage on the right side of the map. Futurama's MCV pretty much undefended, but Shockwave Artillery is going to fire off. Orca Strike landing, perhaps, as it looks like Drive is going to be dropping a, a barracks to try and get some kind of engineer action. The MCV falls, and Futurama's front line crumbles. Bike Rush and Dimitri are here to stay. They haven't won outright, but they have crushed the front line. The Marv does escape, low on health, still powering the late game of Dimitri. That one random hammerhead does find the damage, kills off the command post, and is looking for more. Bike Rush owns pressuring the front, Dimitri pressuring the front, Orca Strike coming in on top of a Juggernaut Husk to try and deny any additional captures. Drive and Futurama on the cusp of dropping two games in a row. They're going to be down 0-2 in this series to even up the score 2-2. Two two. And you don't want to be on a losing streak versus Bike Rush Owns and Dimitri. The Southern Field completely uncontested, but Drive will Marvist it up. Is Dyson working overtime there in the South? Dimitri try desperately trying to get a second engineer into that Marv. Orcas from Bike Rush hunting drives Harvesters. The blue Harvester will go down as that blue Tiberium could have been worth so much to drive. He's going to have to mostly exist off of his Marvist in the south. Bike Rush owns actually going to try and take all of the blue Tiberium for himself. He's going to find it greatly diminished here as a couple of Harvesters from Team East find most of that blue Tiberium. Dimitri has built his wall of fire for Bike Rush to uh, sort of hide behind. Firehawks come through for drive, trying to cut down the air forces of Bike Rush owns. Ultimately, the harvesters do go down, but they deny that income from Bike Rush. He doesn't get the Blue Tiberium because Team East took it out from under him. Orcas and Dimitri's Pitbulls joining forces to kill more of Drive's Harvesters. He really is going to have only the Marv in the south. A Harvester full of Tiberium. How many has Drive lost? Drive plants another Sonic Emitter. The Pitbulls explode in unison. As Dimitri is kind of long distance harvesting this entire blue field in the north, this entire green field in the north, excuse me. And Bike Rush owns has to drop the shockwave artillery to try and survive for a moment longer, but it's not going to be enough. He's got a juggernaut closing the distance. He's going to get as much damage as he can. This Marv will kill the MCV, the orbital bombardment coming in to seal the deal, and the Sonic Emitter dealing that blast, that blast damage to the rear armor of that Marv zone troopers here to help clean up the process and drives marvesting days may be over as he is going to lose a marv to mass zone troopers from the drop from the drop pod coming in at the last second there drives economy probably close to flatlining here zone troopers get cleaned up bike rush own says hey that gives me an idea Drive has just been beaten down time and time again. He's still here in this game. He's lost so many harvesters. He's lost so many refineries. His MCV is fairly exposed down in the southern part of the map. It's going to have a Marv to face off against. I hope he's ready with the one clicks. Ready to fire them off. Futurama reforming his front line. Drive calling attention to the mass of juggernauts that Dimitri has put into the middle of the map. Sonic Emitter, EMP, and a juggernaut with those zone troopers could maybe end this Marv, but it's not going to be fast enough as Futurama donates a harvester to Bike Rush. Dimitri says, knock, knock, I'm here, 
and I'm not going anywhere as his MCV gets absolutely slammed there. Mass juggernauts from Futurama end it in about two volleys. All right, the juggernauts are finally here. The Marv comes online, I think, for Futurama. Marv still clearing out this field. Bike Rush owns with triple engineer. The survivability is perhaps the most important factor with as close as this game is. I keep feeling like Dimitri is about ready to take it, but Futurama has an extremely powerful ground army as well. It's weird for Drive and Bike Rush owns to be the ones underperforming in a game, but Dimitri and Futurama, I think I could watch these guys play just about forever. And another Marv comes online. Bike Rush owns getting a little bit greedy with this Zone Raider squad. I guess he's just trying to keep Drive and Futurama busy while he Marvists away at that field. It feels like Bike Rush owns and Dimitri do have more Tiberium under their control. Hammerhead's showing up. They're just here to clear out the infantry, hoping to get some high value for their lives. And they do actually miss the kill on the Engineer there. They're, they're going for the Zone Trooper squads, and Zone Troopers are not cheap, even if you call them in via the support power. It still does cost you a decent amount. Shockwave Artillery is here. Zone Troopers jump into that Marv just in time to get locked down. And it's going to be the Zone Troopers called in once again. Bike Rush Owns is here to kill a second Marv of Drive. Where's the return fire from Team East? As it's a couple of Juggernauts on each side. There it is. Locks down the Marv of Bike Rush. But the Juggernauts will find the damage against Drive. And it's going to be a one for one for the Marvs. The Juggernauts will fall and Drive just barely needs needs to secure the kill. He gets it one final shot before his juggernaut explodes, but Drive is going to have to concede the bottom right corner of the map. Bike Rush owns is here to stay. His MCV is freshly deployed. He's got a war factory, and he is going to fight to keep this zone. Dimitri closing in on the top side. Futurama is going to need to pivot his defense up there. It's been not a lot of movement from our Team East. And the result is Team West has taken most of the map. They've been slowly choking out Team East piece by piece. And Team East has done a really good job of holding on, but they have taken no real section of the map in the last couple of minutes. Orca Strike comes in, tags a couple of Juggernauts, low health, but they're under the War Factory, so they will repair back up. Beacons get thrown all over the place. Bike Rush owns, I think, is uh, maybe ready to go. Dimitri's MCV taking a lot of damage. Futurama able to shut that down. Infantry here to close the distance. Orbital Bombardment finds four of Futurama's Juggernauts. The, well, finds two of them, and the Rocket Squads find the other two. As the close-in happens, the EMP locks down some of Futurama's juggernauts, and it's the back and forth of the artillery. As Dimitri looks to close out with his last two remaining juggernauts, he's got four in the north, and he's got Firehawks as well, trying to clear out the air forces of Team East. The GG gets called, the score gets evened up, and Dimitri's army will not be stopped. Team East slides down in an exact repeat from week one. They were up 2-0, then they dropped 0-4. And it looks like we're on the same path here again. Drive and Futurama following in Shock Trepid and Eclipse's footsteps. They need to turn it around, and it'll start in game number five. Which takes us to the real and actual Wasteland Dam. And now, of course, looking at it, I feel like the aesthetic in the tile set is actually quite different. But that aside, sticking with that green color as the GDI in the north, this is Dimitri. Coming in big in that last game with the powerful juggernaut wall that would not be stopped. And playing around the edges as the red GDI, it's Bike Rush owns. In the south, Team East, they're letting it slip away from them, but they've got a chance to bring it back as the yellow, as the GDI, it's Drive. And of course, that leaves player number four, the Cyan GDI, it's Futurama. The 
The builds have been pretty bog standard for how you would expect a four-way GDI mirror to go. A lot of it is about playing towards the late game. Those big juggernaut armies, the zone troopers, the rockets as well. Late game kind of focus. Drive and Futurama slipping up since Dimitri switched away from Mark of Cain and to GDI. Seems like Dimitri is finding more success with those juggernaut armies than he did with the EMP of Mark of Cain. But Grishon's trying to sneak in the scout. He did have the rifleman squad down here in the south next to that Tib Spike. Dimitri running a little bit through the green of the Tiberium. Hopefully no one gets caught as they transition down. Okay, Drive does send out the rifleman to scout ahead of his MCV. He won't get caught by some kind of surprise force down at the bottom of the ramp. Of course, you can't deploy on the slope, so you just get caught and you're killed. Bike Jones deploys his MCV and actually goes for a barracks right out of the gate. Contested Tiberium spikes remain uncaptured so far. Driving Futurama, crossing the map. Futurama with those, with those pit bulls in the middle. APC from Bike Rush owns, loaded with rockets. He's tried it like four or five games in a row, and he's going for it again now. He's a big believer in that rock APC. Much safer drive for the player who's on the northern half of the map. You can take your natural expansion on the high ground. And uh, you don't have to travel down that hill, which is a further distance and a more treacherous route. Rock APCs going to be better than the pit bulls. Nine times out of ten at least. Things are looking familiar once again from these four GDI players. Harvester's transferring over. It's going to be the double refinery on the expansion with the barracks. Bike Rochon's maybe a little bit slower there, but he had to travel down the hill, so that explains it. He's clearing out his side of the map, trying to secure that location. Refinery from Drive even later. It did go command post instead. That's the tech instead of the eco for drive. And he's at least got that upgrade about a quarter of the way done. So that's the difference. He wants that fast AP ammo. And we'll see what he's able to do with it. Futurama going to follow it up with his own command post. And Bike Rush owns following it up. AP ammo going to be a bit delayed for him. Actually, the beacon follows out, so Dimitri gets a scan, sees the double MCV, I think. He sees the Tier 3 based on the beacon timing. He knows that command post is there. Mind drop from the APC. Orchestrike comes in from Bike Rush. He's got a, a, an airfield. So watch out for those hammerheads. Watch out for those orcas, which did so much work. That is one thing. Bike Rush Owns has not necessarily been winning the 1v1s, but the amount of economic damage that he did to drive has been pretty substantial, especially in that last game. Futurama heads down the hill. It looks like he sent some advanced squads as well just to try and try and clear the area. Double MCV or multi MCV, especially when you've got two players, so four total potential MCVs out on the field. Four Sonic emitters potentially coming through. Orca Strike comes in. Reclamator Hub has been deployed. Drive looking to defend his harvesters. He's going to get the Orcas in the exchange. He's going to save one of his harvesters, lose one of them, and it's the fight in the south. Orca Strike comes in from Dimitri. A little bit too late as the mothership comes into the middle of the map. It's a feature of the map. Doesn't actually do anything. And uh, we will see it explode in a minute's time or so. 
more and more air forces from bike rush so difficult for drive to deal with he is just not ready for this at all and actually a free kill on his zone trooper squad so perfectly done there by bike rush owns maybe even going to clean up another harvester as he gets the spot on that marv and he gets the kill on the harvester this attack has been stopped in its tracks firehawk comes through for drive clears it out but it's going to be the low power mode as well juggernauts from bike rush juggernauts from dimitri here to set the defense in the middle of the in the southern half of the map bike rush owns calls off off his low health harvester so that the orca strike doesn't claim another life futurama setting up there in the south firehawks passing through an orca strike actually did claim one of bike rush's harvesters it was low enough on health i can't believe that it actually did go down Futurama and Drive are in trouble in the south. Futurama has got the expansion in the north, and he might be able to walk up that hill and start pressuring Dimitri, but for now, it's a double team in the south. Bike Rush owns moves his MCV forward. The Firehawk just taking a bit of damage there as Drive is going to lose his MCV. Double Sonic Emitter gets deployed one in each direction. Uh, Futurama saving Drive here as it just becomes a network of Sonic Emitters. The multi-MCV play is powerful. The reverse move from Futurama is the RNG on his side it might be this time as it tags his Marv right at the end there just out of range of the juggernauts the sonic emitter trying to clear the skies but it's going to be the orbital bombardment that comes down on top of the MCV the engineer jumps inside of the juggernaut just in time two more husks gets taken down and a third juggernaut eliminated as the engineer <laughs> crawling through the maelstrom as he can barely keep his life and he is going to claim another juggernaut husk but the Firehawks coming through. It's not enough as the laser fence there keeping that Conyard alive. Orca Strike coming in. Shockwave Artillery fires back from the other side as Futurama closes the distance. A couple of Juggernauts trying to find their mark. And on the south side, Drive going for the Marvist once again. His economy has been shot. His base has been pushed back. And his hope is going to be in that green field in the corner. It looks like Dimitri does spot it. He calls it out. This engineer is about to get sniped, gets eliminated. The MCV is still here for Bike Rush Owns. Bloodhounds get called in, but they get jumped on immediately by those juggernauts just completely destroyed there. Futurama still largely uncontested in the north of the map, but he doesn't have very many refineries. His harvesters are long distance at the blue and Team East is getting pushed further and further back. Futurama trying to buy more and more time for Drive, who's got that Marv closing in on the south side, picks up another engineer, and it's going to be up to Bike Rush Owns to hold that off. Futurama's juggernauts find the damage. They're able to clean up some of Bike Rush's forces. Bike Rush long distance harvesting at the same time. Hammerhead trying to come through. Marv has retreated to the green Tiberium field. Futurama has taken too much damage. The Marv goes down. The Juggernauts continue to reign supreme as the Firehawks from Drive bomb away the Husks. And Futurama's Marv was in the south. It wasn't in the north where Dimitri has planted a flag down on the low ground. And he's looking to take that field away from Futurama. Bike Rush and Dimitri want to complete the 3-0 reverse move here as they want to mount the comeback and make the debt even bigger for drive and futurama pitbulls come through hunting harvesters hunting juggernauts and dimitri is just gonna smash futurama in the north double sonic emitter on top of this war war factory as it does force dimitri away the zone troopers getting a little bit of damage against those pitbulls but the pitbulls claim the husks and Bike Rush owns, has, I guess, Firehawks to deal with as Drive comes through with the Firehawks. The Marv has is re reclaiming the front line there. Shockwave Artillery fires off. Futurama plants one Sonic Emitter close to Dimitri, but it looks like the Marv will survive the EMP. Dimitri trying desperately to finish off. No, Futurama gets it the last two. Juggernauts get the killing blows there as another Marv gets eliminated. Orbital Bombardment will come down. Futurama has left the game. It's up to Drive to complete the 1v2. Bike Rush owns and Dimitri dropping game one, dropping game two, but it looks like they're on the road 
for a 3-2 comeback story and then to follow that up with a swift 4-2. They're hoping for a complete repeat of last week. Drive falling apart at his, as he's fighting on too many fronts at once. Fully heroic rifleman inside of that foxhole. Oh my gosh, Drive is getting so much value for that one foxhole that he took earlier in this game. Bike Rush owns even warranting to beacon it as it looks like the infantry forces of Bike Rush owns have forced back the Marv of Drive. Bike Rush owns still slowly harvesting away at that middle Tiberium field at Drive's natural expansion. Drive trying to press forward. His juggernauts are about to get targeted down. Firehawks coming in for the bombing run, and they're actually going to go for absolutely nothing. I guess they were loaded with missiles or something, but they strato fighter out of there. Drive now has a decent amount of income with all of the forces, all of the refineries under his control. Juggernaut's getting sniped, but the slingshot will push away that hammerhead. And goodbye, hammerhead. Dimitri reclaims the ground as he marches another um, MCV down the hill. Bike Rush owns giving chase to a ghost of a Marv that has long since retreated to the middle plateau. Three random engineers there for Dimitri. Slingshots dealing with the infantry. They could just run them over, but for the current moment, they will retreat. Bike Rochon's crests the hill. He gets one harvester down. A second harvester is under threat. He's going to be able to reverse move away, and Drive is just going to have to go for it. He's going to try and cross the map and just go for the kill move here. A combination of Hammerheads and the Marv. He's going to try and shut off Bike Rush's power, take down Bike Rush's ability to build any anti-air defenses. Dimitri shows up with the slingshots, and it's going to be up to the Marv to defend against these slingshots. The low power mode for Bike Rush owns, and the Hammerheads turn around but Bike Rush owns is back online with a double AA turret here. The engineers do get sniped and the hammerheads fly over a rocket squad army as the rockets will clear the skies, but not before the hammerheads kill a large portion of them. Defend the Marv, defend the hammerheads, but it's falling apart for Drive. Dimitri reestablishing himself in the north. More engineers just getting sniped. No fresh refinery on that center contested fight field. Dimitri loses another slingshot. Bike Rush owns try not get to get caught too much by the splash damage. More hammerheads getting chased down. Just kill the slingshot. Finally, he kills the slingshot, and the infantry forces of Bike Rush owns are going to get targeted. This is the chance for the Marv to try and turn this around, but it's not enough. Drive is just going to reverse move up the hill. He's going to try and escape from this army, just slowly peppering it with damage as he reverses away. Drive has still got a decent amount of infrastructure under his control, and because everything is being funneled into one bank account, he actually has a decent amount. Is he going to be able to reverse move his way to victory here? Bike Rush owns drops another beacon. That hammerhead has nearly cleared up every single rocket squad. It's literally sacrificing itself just to save the Marv. Juggernaut's being pulled. Dimitri desperately trying to pull something back together. He's had almost no income for a while now. All right, there's enough Juggernauts here. They're going to be able to catch this Marv. Four from Dimitri, one from Bike Rush, and one Hammerhead. I don't think is going to be enough to kill all five of these Juggernauts. Shockwave Artillery is going to fire off and actually drive changes direction. He gets all four of the Juggernauts almost immediately. And it's going to be up to this Marv to close the distance. Can he do it? The splash damage may not be enough if these Juggernauts come back online. And they do. Dimitri gets the kill there. And it looks like Bike Rush owns and Drive will pull. Bike Rush owns and Dimitri will be able to defeat Drive. Although a couple of these harvesters weak and Bike Rush owns has been so strapped for cash for most of this, Dimitri does deploy the anti air turret. And I guess Drive is going to sacrifice these. Okay, no, there he goes. He finally does pull back away from that base. Dimitri saying, saving Bike Rush once again.
Dimitri, a huge upgrade as a player in my mind. He has been playing phenomenally across both weeks. It's not a fluke. This guy is just good. Drive still fighting it out. This is this is true stuff from Drive. He is not just throwing in the towel, forcing Dimitri to power down some of his refineries to try and keep his other buildings online. It wasn't quite enough. One random juggernaut from Drive is just totally forgotten. He could turn around and start bombarding this power plant and try and go for a kill, but it was actually the beacon of, I think, Bike Rush that actually saw that. Bike Rush owns sees also the MCV coming out from that war factory. Orchestra getting called in. Dimitri is sort of being cut off at the knees here as his economy is still pretty weak. Pulls back his harvesters, sends them into the field, hoping that this Orca Strike will time out. It's still going to tag one of the harvesters. Almost gets two of them. The Juggernaut did safely walk its way down the hill. Bike Rush owns has got a big base going for the splash damage. Dimitri or Drive calls in the Firehawks. And Bike Rush owns has totally reinvented himself on this southern field. He's even taken the corner Tiberium Spike as well. He's got that much going for it for him. And actually, another engineer sniped by this rifleman squad. Are you kidding me? Bike Rush owns loses an engineer trying to take the contested spike. Dimitri drops an additional sonic emitter, but there the power plant is finally online, and this sonic emitter is going to be difficult to dislodge, considering that Bike Rush owns also has like four predator tanks. Where is Dimitri? Where is Drive getting all of this cash from? Tungsten shells have been purchased, and Drive is going to try and break the front line of Bike Rush Owns with the help of that support power. Hammerheads are here. They're going to claim a couple of those tank lives, and that one juggernaut marching its way from the north finally does get taken out. And it looks like the end of the road is here for Drive. He invested a lot into this War Factory, into this MCV, and it looks like he's going to be losing it all to Drive and Dimitri. Juggernaut's coming in for Dimitri. Predator tanks too little, too late. The GG gets called, and Drive drops game number five. The 1v2 almost happened. That's the second time that Drive has almost pulled out a 1v2 on the map Wasteland Dam. And I think last time his team might, might have been Futurama as well, who tapped out almost halfway through that game. Drive with pretty incredible income for the second half of that match, largely due to the fact that Futurama handed over a ton of resources, a ton of refineries. And that'll do it for game number five. Bike Rush owns and Dimitri Three games to two, they are in striking distance of winning this series, of winning this $400 split of the prize pool. Which takes us to the map, The Harvest, for game number six. On the right side is Team West. Here is the red GDI. Give it up for Bike Rush Owns. And his teammate spawning as the orange GDI. This is Dimitri. Double tib spike for each player on this map. EMP control center in the middle. As the Cyan GDI, it's Futurama. And just south of him as the yellow GDI, it's Drive. The four-way GDI mirror, it seems impossible for us to get away from it. You can try as you might, but for the current meta of the game, this is what the players have decided is the strongest. Riflemen do eject out there, trying to jump on the Rifleman squad. I think barely Drive did, did get the better of that exchange, and then his Rocket Squad's actually landing a really solid hit against the uh, the Rocket Squad, the Rifleman of Bike Rush. Sometimes those Rockets don't totally land their shots. Trying to dislodge his opponent in the south. Meanwhile... Everything is looking pretty normal for economic-focused macro openers from everybody. 
No fast tech so far, no suicidal plays by any means. Buck Jones adding an additional rifleman squad to this blue field. He really wants to make sure that he has got eyes on that. Quick expansions coming out from both sides. And we're going to be in for another multi-MCV, juggernaut-focused, sonic emitter, big splashy, fight for the middle kind of a match. Based on how these guys are both opening, both teams are opening, I can't imagine that it'll be anything else. War Factory first in the south from Bike Rush Owns. Meanwhile, for Futurama, it's instead into an, a refinery. Drive does actually show up with pit bulls, with rocket squads, with everything. Pulls back the pit bull just in time there. He doesn't want to take any additional damage. Doesn't want to lose that pit bull for nothing. Bike Rush Owns and uh, Dimitri. One game away from the reverse sweep going 4-0 in map score. And following up the Team West win from last week. The similarities are eerie between these two V2s. A little more variety, I think, in that last one. It wasn't just GDI mirrors all the way around, but... If the players feel that this is the strongest way to play the game, can't fault them for that. A couple of Predator tanks are here. They are going to get overwhelmed. Another couple of Predator tanks being added into the mix, but Dimitri and Bike Rochones, the mass pit bull, is here to hunt harvesters. Futurama is going to need more than a watchtower to hold off these masses. Drive shows up with a couple of pit bulls of himself, and he's going to be able to hold that off for the current moment. EMP Control Center still unclaimed at the current moment. And that double war factory for Bike Rochones leading to a big lead in pit bulls, but he hasn't gotten many harvester kills for it. He may be able to turn south. He may be able to find a bit of damage there. Command post has the follow-up for Futurama. He's got the Predator tanks. I think he's the only one who didn't go big into pit bulls. Drive even himself went for a couple of pit bulls there. Some of them just to defend this blue Tiberium, which he takes another harvester full of. Drive and Futurama staring down the barrel of the gun and not wanting to give up, not wanting to let their hemisphere down. Yes, indeed, they represent the entire hemisphere. But, I mean, to be honest, these guys all live pretty close to each other. I mean, Bike Rush Owns is in the UK. I think Dimitri is actually quite far away. I think he's in Australia, so they're quite far away. Bike Rush's Harvester does get tagged there by the Orca Strike. A little bit of damage as it looks like Bloodhounds are getting called in by Drive in the south. Another Orca Strike coming in. Futurama trying to hit another Refinery, hit another Harvester. Takes a little chip damage off of that Conyard as well. Hammerheads have been spotted. The Pitbull's going to be able to clean them up, but the Pitbulls themselves are going to have to get out of town. Futurama and Drive looking to take the middle of the map. They want to contest both of the center fields. The blue in the south, the green in the north, and it's Mass Pitbull versus Mass Pitbull, but Drive is going to have to get out of there. There's no way to take that engagement. That would be a donation of the entire Pitbull army there. Four Orcas on the south side. I love this move from Drive. He's going to try and sneak in. He's going to try and find the undefended Harvesters, and he's going to be able to get him. He probably could have gone for Dimitri's Harvesters. Instead, he goes for Bike Rush's Harvesters, gets two of them that are fully loaded with Tiberium. Might be able to get a third, but no, he gets out of there. A perfect execution there. Only trades one Orca for two fully loaded Harvesters, and uh, Futurama may actually get a kill on this Reclamator hub. Are you kidding me here? Two Two Reclamator hubs get deployed at the same time. Sonic Emitter gets deployed as well, but it's going to be a sell-off at the last second as the Juggernaut shots slam into that drive, and Futurama are saying the North is ours. Get out of here. Dimitri packs up his MCV. He's going to be going a little bit closer to Futurama, and Futurama has the same exact idea. There's the deploy. Orca Strike, I think, coming in. Futurama is here with Drive Sonic Emitters as well, but it's going to be a back and forth on the Sonic Emitters. 
two from each side. Hammerheads coming in as well. Orchestrike tags that MCV. Pitbulls have cycled around to the south side, going for the Harvesters, going for the exchange. Maybe they can dive on a couple of D Dimitri's Pitbulls or Harvesters, and that would be a good kill. Reclamator Hub is back up and running, but the Futurama Marv is already here. The Sonic Emitters have eliminated themselves in a sub-zero game as it looks like Drive is being pushed into a corner and defeated down there in the south. Dimitri doing the same thing, trying to sneak a couple of pit bulls into his opponent's main fields. Drive and Futurama not responding at all. They're going to take harvester loss after harvester loss to these pit bulls that are just standing there and doing the damage. Futurama pulls back from the front line. Dimitri showing up with Predator tanks in the south, but it's going to be Zone Troopers and Orcas from Drive that clear up those Predators. One Harvester finally goes down there right at the end. And Futurama has made safe his side of the map. Dimitri has made safe his side of the map. Both teams clearing out the attacking forces from their side. Shockwave artillery lands on the War Factory, but it doesn't land on the Marv of Dimitri. The War Factory goes down, the Juggernaut goes down, the MCV gets cleared. Drive and Futurama are gonna try and claim this Northern Field. Double Marv, double Juggernaut armies. Their wall of fire is ready to go. Shockwave artillery fires off, but this time it's for Drive. It catches the Marv, and that is going to be a shutdown of Dimitri's Marv. Sonic Strike comes through, clears the sky, but this is double Marv versus no Marv. The GG gets called. Bike Rush owns, exits the game, and Dimitri shortly after. Drive and Futurama take us 3-3 into the ace match. What is the funniest place for an amazing best of seven to end? The funniest map in the world for this kind of a series for a $500 prize pool to end is here on Red Zone Rampage. As the Red GDI in the north, this is Bike Rush Owns. As the purple marked of Kane, also in the north, this is Dimitri. Finally mixing it up a little bit here, back to that marked of Kane. As the Cyan GDI in the south, this representing Team East is Futurama. The dude is a beast, and he showed it there in that last game. As the yellow marked of Kane, this is Drive. All right, so Drive and Futurama have come dangerously close to elimination, but they brought it back in that last game, and it's actually going to be a shadow team rush coming out from Drive, trying to shut down... Uh, Dimitri trying to eliminate his progression on this blue Tiberia map. Looks like he gets one power plant of Bike Rush Owns, who thought it would be safe in the other corner. And Bike Rush Owns has one pit bull, but one pit bull doesn't have that much DPS, and the heal from the War Factory is actually enough that it does keep that Harvester at full health. GDI Marked of Kane versus GDI Marked of Kane. All right, Buggy is going to try and dive on these shadow teams, but they're going to be able to get the power plant regardless. There's the sell-off. They're going to try and escape, which won't work super well versus a Buggy, but they might be able to make it over the top of the... Oh, yeah, they can use the terrain to get a little bit of distance. EMPs line up, EMPs land on the MCV and on the Shredder turret as hoping against hope, Futurama and B Drive are hoping to clean up this final game and get a win. And they are pulling out all of the stops to try and make it happen. EMP and the MCV going for a shadow team rush and trying to keep their hope alive by any means necessary. Going for a crane, Dimitri wanting to really utilize that cash, not a big surprise there. You can get a ton of cash very fast, but as soon as you expand off of your blue to try and take the edges, well, there's one clear edge, which is between you and your ally, but after that, 
it becomes quite difficult as this MCV has walked all the way to his opponent's base. I think it's a fast tech move out of here and it's multi MCV, whatever it is, but it is going to be a deploy here as the EMP does land on the MCV, one of the MCVs of Futurama. It's going to be Predator tanks and pit bulls. This is not going to be a long one either way. And yes, there is the tier three. It was a fast tech from Futurama. He wants that Sonic emitter right on the front line and he has got it he's got that blue tiberium he's got that multi mcv and it's going to be an air tower possibly just for a mine drop coming in here from drive possibly also for vertigos there if this game goes on much longer juggernauts do get deployed but that is a futurama juggernaut directly on the front line and it's going to be an orca strike coming in orcas from bike rush owns and it's a wharf it's an airfield on the front line bike rush owns moves his own mcb the gdi players will not be stopped and it's going to be magnetic mines from drive on top of futurama's harvesters there on top of Dimitri's harvesters there as Futurama with his war factory, with his juggernaut, is trying desperately to shut down the power of the Marked of Cain player. A couple of scorpion tanks do sneak through, drive, drops a crane in the back of Futurama's base, and he's going to be going for the beam cannons to try and shut down Bike Rush Owns, but at this point, I have no idea who is going to be able to go where. Vertigo comes through, the heal is not fast enough on those drones, it needs to get those juggernauts back online there's an emp coming through for dimitri but he might be about to lose his mcv the orcas come through but they get sniped immediately and i don't think futurama has much money back at home he loses another sonic emitter but the tech is here the war factory is here for dimitri bike rush owns trying to bust through the base of drive but drive has got beam cannons he's getting eliminated by the sonic emitters trying to cut off the attack path of those beam cannons and the emp he is going to try and land here. No, the Awakened Squad running away. Bike Rush owns and Futurama just trashing their Nod opponent. Three avatars on the front line. Going to try and go for the absorbing of some of those shots. The War Factory is now dead. So whatever Dimitri has out on the field is what you see is what you get. I don't think he was able to drop a crane in Bike Rush's build radius at any point. Futurama is going to try and pivot to the north side of the map because Bike Rush owns is coming for him. Drive with the crane and with the harvesters transferring over. He's going to try and take Dimitri's old base perhaps as it looks like Futurama is running out of steam trying to go north against triple avatar engineer pops on out he's going for the cap of the mcv and uh i think once the laser fence is down he should be able to complete that drive are you paying attention drive are you watching he gets the cell barely in time he snipes the engineer as well but bike rush owns forces the cell off there as the response Futurama back on the north side of the base continues to pound away at Dimitri's base. Can Dimitri survive? Bike Rush owns has spent a lot of his resources taking down Drive and he hasn't totally defeated him. Drive still has four beam cannons burning away at that MCV. One of them gets eaten up by the Sonic Emitter. A second one goes down. Drive barely keeping his hopes alive. Can he barely burn it down? Dimitri leaves the game. He hands everything over to Bike Rush not much in terms of tech, not much in terms of an army, but just enough in terms of two avatars walking away. It's the 1v2 from Bike Rush Owns, and Drive is doing what he can. A couple of Venoms being added into the mix. Anti-air is one thing that is not strong with Bike Rush's forces. The MCV crawling its way forward for Bike Rush Owns. Enough Juggernauts are here from Futurama that he can waste away buildings extremely quickly. EMP locks down that MCV. Sonic Emitter gets deployed. The multi MCV play finds a huge hove, a cove of harvesters as three harvesters go down in two blasts there. The Venoms don't have nearly enough DPS, and Futurama needs to cut off the power of Bike Rush Owns. He needs to shut down these Sonic Emitters. Dimitri is out of this game, and Drive might be next. If this crane falls, Drive has very little left on this map. 
He does have one refinery there in the north, so Hope springs eternal. Two beam cannons are here. Futurama turns to the south. He's going to be able to shut down the base defenses of Bike Rush Owns. The crane stays alive. He's got two buildings queued. Futurama with a fully upgraded power plant. It finally goes down. That might have been enough to slow down Futurama's production. He's already got the juggernauts here on the map. A war factory has been deployed by, Fut by Drive in the north. Engineer jumps into the Avatar Husk. A clutch call there for Futurama. He manages to claim one additional Avatar for his army. Three to three, the map score as close as it comes with this best of seven. Team East, their tournament life on the line. Shockwave artillery coming in. Landing on Futurama's forces. Bike Rush Owns presses forward. The 1v2 is going to be complete if he can kill these juggernauts. He's pressing forward. A hit for a hit. A juggernaut for an avatar as a second juggernaut goes down. Launching of Tib Silo to try and block off the attack path of the avatar. The EMP lands, but Futurama's army has fallen to pieces. The attempt at the beam cannons to try and split this army from drive is nice, but it's too little, too late. It looks like Team East, with a heartbreak, will fall here against Bike Rush Owns. Engineers coming out from Futurama, fighting the good fight as drive EMPs the Sonic Emitter, but the Juggernauts are too much. Five Juggernauts, two, two Scorpion Tanks from the high ground, and a Magnetic Mind Drop as well, but it's not enough. Bike Rush Owns has too much drive, has been defeated. The GG gets called, and a heartbreak loss for Team East. As Bike Rush takes the game with a great 1v2 on Red Zone Rampage. Ugh, the series closes out, but we still have more games to get to. But it does mean that Team West will take home the prize, the $400 split of the $500 prize. Drive in Futurama, as well as Shock Trepid and Eclipse, will take $100 between them. And that will do it for the 2v2. Let's jump into a 1v1. Which takes us to Tournament Odyssey for Game 1 of this Best of 7, representing Team East. It is the Cyan Marked of Cain Shock Trepid. And representing Team West, hoping to keep the winning streak going, this as the Pink Reaper 17 is Masterleaf. Choosing to not play GDI or Marked of Cain, it feels a little bit like the only one who wants to do something a little bit different. I guess we'll see how he chooses to play out this Reaper 17, but Reaper versus Marked of Cain is at least a bit different from a lot of the other stuff that we have been seeing. Of course, Marked of Cain has been a favorite for these last couple of months. But I'm definitely excited to see how this 1v1 shapes up. Four squads here, that is four EMPs potentially being placed down by Shock Trepid. It looks like Master Leaf did spot it through the middle of the map, so I think he does know that it is on the way to him. And he will uh, probably have a buzzer hive or something ready to deal with that, so then at least you have to waste one of your EMPs on the buzzer hive. And then you can have a couple of more moments to deal with that. Shock Trepid hanging out near the natural expansion of Master Leaf. Master Leaf going for just a little bit of scouting, trying to see exactly what Master uh, what Shock Trepid is doing. And it's going to be Triple Shard Walker as the response for Master Leaf. Bikes are going to be able to catch this Seeker tank. Buggy absorbs the first couple of shots. And the bikes are going to be able to finish off that Seeker. Very nicely executed there from Shock Trap, but that's sort of the exact right move. That's exactly how you want that to go down. Now, Shard Launchers are maybe a little bit harder to break, but the EMPs are going to make it a bit easier. First one goes down in the darkness of the night. The EMP doesn't last 
on the other shard launcher quite fat quite as much but uh good control there by shock trepid trying to thin out these shard launchers but shard launchers just do so much damage and the fact that you get it for free as reaper 17 is obviously a powerful unit choice for master leaf nerve center on the main base for master leaf but it's going to be second war factory at the natural expansion for shock trepid so shock does see this he does know exactly what is on the way for him it's going to be dev tanks and he's hoping to do a bit of damage to shut this down the first dev tank is out so this is going to be chased away you can't fight i mean if he had a couple more bikes he actually probably could have jumped on that dev tank but it definitely would have cost him the dev tank chews through bike buggy so quickly Master Leaf drops the Technology Assembler. His Tier 3 is up all off of a one base kind of a build. Double War Factory into a second refinery. The, op the Operations Center is a long way away, and it's going to be Tier 3 is even further away for Shock Trepid. Master Leaf, on the other hand, it's Descents, it's Dev Tanks right up the middle of the map. No EMPs to follow this up, but the Tier 2 does get sold off. It's into the Mechapede, so no more Corruptors, no more Dev Tanks for Master Leaf. Mechapedes are going to be the follow-up for him. Descents do get wiped away there. Shock Trepid hoping to open this series up with a 1-0 lead and kind of disrupt the losing streak. But early wins don't finish the series, so we'll see if Shock Trepid can follow it up right now he's in an okay position to try and hold this off he's got these he's got the secret shrine with the tib upgrades coming in emp lands on both of the mechapedes there a third mechapede shows up repair drones as well dev tanks shredding all of these light units but one mechapede does finally go down planting the mechapedes with their segments facing out is how master leaf tries to keep them safe awakened squads going down and the stasis locks down the war factory master leaf will have his way with this expansion one refinery three harvesters all of them vulnerable to these mechapedes and that stasis completely locking shock trepid out of his reinforcements emp might be able to land but he does get his own refinery as well cutting off some of his income potential but the Awakened Squads do go down. The Stasis does finally evaporate there as these Mechapedes make their way towards the main base and the other War Factory. Actually, that War Factory was sold off. It's just been a single War Factory play here for Shock Trepid. His production completely shut down, and it looks like finally he's going to be able to push this away. Master Leaf has bought himself a lot of time. The phase on the dev tanks allowing them to survive up to this point and Master Leaf is keeping up the pressure. His expansion behind this is a little bit awkward, a little bit stilted as he places that refinery far away from that Tiberium field. Triple Mechapede but the EMP is the only thing keeping Shock Trepid in this game. Otherwise these Scorpion tanks would have been too little too late an emp whiffs there master leaf able to avoid that shock trepid's economy finally getting underway but his production has never been good master leaf now with so many harvesters and two refineries very far away so the extra harvesters will actually be useful there for master leaf emp lands once again on, the, on those mechapedes. A couple of their segments are still active outside of the EMP range. Oh boy, Shock Trepid is going to have to try and claw this one back, but he's mostly defeated. Well, not defeated. He's mostly pushed back the army of Master Leaf. This attack has been going on so long that the repair drone uh, support power has timed back out and master leaf calls it back in to get some more repairs on the battlefield these two dev tanks are still alive shock trepid going fast legs not going uh tip infusion necessarily although he may have also gotten that just to upgrade his basic infantry units if he gets any more of them for now the enlightened squads and the shot and the scorpion tanks are going to be the way that he goes forward 
Finally is able to get the kill on some of these mecha beans. Second one does escape, and those buzzers running for the hills trying to clean up the enlightened as the scorpions clean up both of the mecha beans. And Master Leaf is just using this opportunity to eat up his natural expansion field. His second army is going to be on the way shortly, and he has been going towards a third base as well. Reaper Tripod out on the field, and the counterattack is going to be difficult for Shock Trepid. Operations Center in the back. Master Leaf almost dropping his drone ship for that third base expansion. Storm Riders are out. Scorpion tanks find a bit of damage on the left side. Going for the Technology Assembler. It really doesn't have many hit points, but Shard Walkers and Storm Riders will be enough to push back Shock Trepid and to stop him from taking down that Tier 3. Bikes come in and a buggy. They do spot the MCV of Master Leaf, so Shock Trepid knows the situation that he's up against. Shielded Harvesters have already been worn down a little bit here. For now, these Shard Walkers are going to be getting stopped in the middle of the map. And Reaper Tripod there to block off any third expansion from Shock Trepid. Master Leaf wanting to take complete control of this game. Shock Trepid, I must say, I'm very glad that he decided to pivot into a mix of infantry and vehicles. Instead of just staying straight with the vehicles. EMP taking away those force fields. EMP locks down two of the shard walkers. It's going to be up to the bikes to try and break this attack. Only one Reaper tripod here, and it is dealing with the Enlightened, so it's not attacking the bikes, which is good for Shock Trepid, but there's the phase. Locks down the dev tank, absorbs that Reaper tripod's shield, and it's going to be the Storm Riders potentially swooping in to do some additional damage. Tibcord just got upgraded on the bike, so I don't know if this is advisable. One, two, no! The second Storm Rider does escape low on health, but still alive. Just as Tibcor missiles finish, so does Blue Shard as Master Leaf takes a third base. It looks like his refineries more properly placed there. His Storm Riders right on the edge of destruction, but two of them staying alive for now. And Master Leaf closing in. His entire natural expansion has gone into this army. Those upgrades and the Shard Walker, well, Shard Walkers double upgraded as the EMP locks down a power plant as well as the Shard Walkers. The Reaper Tripod doesn't find the damage that it wants, and these EMPs are just killer for Shock Trepid. He's almost able to hold on, but ultimately Master Leaf will be able to break through the front line. And it looks like one avatar actually steps out right at the end there. And Shock Trepid is going to try and hold off everything that Master Leaf is throwing at him with one single avatar and one single set of repair drones. He does get a kill on one of the Shard Walkers, but the rest of them are going to be able to pull back a second. No, actually, a stealth tank comes on out, and it's already got those Tib Core missiles. He might be able to pick off a couple of these Shard Walkers as they try and exit. And it looks like Shock Trepid has been able to step onto the high ground, but he has no economy up there. Unlike Master Leaf, who was looking to take the Tib Spikes away from his opponent. Shardwalker does get cleaned up. Double stealth tank. If you get that up to fourth stealth tanks, that can shred a base pretty quickly. Shock Trepid might have an opportunity here. Shardwalkers, even with the blue shard upgrade, do take a while to break down buildings. Perhaps the only thing they're not really good at. Shredder turret trying to hold the line. Double refinery now on this field. And Master Leaf is about to just run away with the game in terms of economy. He's going to be able to trade out so many units. And Shock Trepid's control of these stealth tanks isn't perfect. It basically does need to be perfect. Otherwise, he's going to lose them. Cleans up that little attack. Master Leaf behind this, going Reaper Tripods. Random Descent Squad poking in here and there. Going for the Scout, Master Leaf has claimed one of the Tib Spikes, gets the second one as well moments before the Awakened Squad closes in to kill off that Engineer 
four tib spikes for master leaf double refinery on his third base and more harvesters for longer on that third as well. Shock Trepid might be able to buy enough time to mount some kind of a defense. Loses one stealth tank, but he claims one harvester for it. Shuts down the original main base expansion economy, rather, of Master Leaf, but he doesn't get the tier three. That may have actually been the more valuable target. Double Reaper tripod moving in, and with his base this spread out, this is where Shock Trepid is going to find it a little bit difficult to defend all angles at once. This engineer getting chased into the corner of the map as the stealth tanks cross back across the middle of the map. And that engineer does almost escape. Uh, I think the tripods will get the snipe there, yeah. The stealth tanks cross all the way down to the south. They're going to try and poke in and deal some of the damage to these harvesters. They will be able to clean those up. Reaper tripods just standing over by that tip spike. But this is where the defense becomes more difficult. The obelisk is here, but he's going to trade out at least two harvesters. Three harvesters will go down. And these blue shard launchers are going to try and find a fourth harvester kill. Although the third hasn't yet been realized. Repair drones. Obelisk does get uh, placed down, but ultimately it's not enough firepower to cut off that attack completely. Master Leaf having already claimed half of his Tib field and having four Tib spikes under his control for a while, now he has three. Another Harvester does go down. The EMP lands on the tripods, but it's not enough. Splitting the EMPs between the targets means that the tripods come back online. Another Harvester goes down, and Shock Trepid's economy is in shambles. Master Leaf doesn't like losing. He gets the GG as Master Leaf takes game number one on day two. Shock Trepid faltering in game number one, and Master Leaf just ahead almost that entire game. The economy really diverging at the end, especially when Master Leaf just flatlined Shock Trepid. And that'll do it for game one, which sends us into game number two. And that takes us to Tournament Highlands. So Odyssey and the Highlands, arguably two Nod favored maps. But it didn't seem to matter too much in that last game. As the Cyan marked of Kane, this is Shock Trepid. Down 0-1 and representing Team East. Meanwhile, in the West, representing Team West, hoping to prove that he's the best as the purple screen. This is Master Leaf. East versus West has yielded some incredible games and some great back and forth series, but the overall East versus West score has been less than incredible. And it's one of those things where even though, ooh, okay, hold on, engineer along the north side of the map, something we'll try and uh, keep an eye out as the shenanigans begin between these two players. It's one of those cases where even though the series score is... Oh, actually, no, that engineer gets sniped. Nicely done there by Shock Trepid. He finds the engineer. He's not able to get it. He tries for the Force Fire. He will go for the Stealth Reveal of Infantry. That was kind of a, a weird moment where he goes for the Force Fire, and it's like, but the Infantry reveals Stealth, so you just have to step forward to be able to get the, uh, get the kill on that engineer. The series score of this event, East versus West, is very one-sided, yet the individual show matches, the individual series, and the individual games have been very contested, very back and forth. Nice delay on the economy here. A lot of builds are so down to the moment that uh, he was depending on that cash to finish up that harvester. A lot of the timings have been figured out, and of course, a little bit of a delay here or there is not the end of the game, but still, players are depending on things coming out at a certain time, and that's how the build is developed. So now, the rest of the build is just slightly off, slightly shifted, and of course, Master Leaf spent an extra 500 credits that got him absolutely nothing, Shock Trepid even going to be pursuing the edges of the map, just making sure that there's no sneakiness happening along the sides. He doesn't want to be falling down to any dumb engineer play. 
Even the capturing of an of a power plant, while it may not win or lose the game, can be can have a bit of a tilting effect on your opponent. EMP locks down the gunwalker in the middle of the map. Nicely done there by Shock Trepid. He is really living up to the marked of Kane side of things. Really highlighting all of those EMP abilities. Bike buggy along the south side of the map. Shock Trepid ready to go. Master Leaf going to need to defend against this. His MCV isn't down there, and he doesn't have a refinery with a fresh harvester popping out. So it is going to be a nerve center and another fast tech from Master Leaf. He does like the fast tech builds. This does get spotted basically immediately by Shock Trepid, so he will see the tier 3. He's got an additional EMP here as well if he wants it. And the power plant uh, doesn't actually go down, but the War Factory does get shut down. And Shock Trepid is going to recommit to the attack. A couple of secret tanks on the south side are going to get cleaned up. The dev tank may get overwhelmed, but I don't actually think there's enough bikes there to do it. The power plant does go down. Nicely done by Shock Trepid. And Master Leaf does have a dev tank there, but uh, it's a little bit too far away from that Tiberium to charge up. He's going to have to move it a smidge closer than that. There's the transfer to the blue Tiberium for Shock Trepid. And... Lightning spike in the corner. That's not an ideal placement for Master Leaf. That really is uh, not what you want to be using that first lightning spike for. It's an okay defense in terms of economy because that tip spike will eventually pay for the lightning spike. But that is not how you want to be utilizing that lightning spike. And nod favored map more or less. But this is feeling like a nod favored match as Master Leaf is having difficulty getting his feet underneath him. He's going to try here to disrupt Shock Trepid entirely with these Mechapedes. Shock Trepid closes in. He's got the mass. He's got the numbers. Who cares about tech? But the stasis does catch him. The EMP gets that Mechapede, gets every single segment. There's nothing here to kill it, but it does buy a little bit of time. And it is going to be a dev tank closing in from Master Leaf as well as two more Mechapedes. He says, I can do this off of one base. You need two. I need one. And this focus on economy from Shock Trepid may be too few units, but let's see as the shot as the Sonic as the uh, Stasis Shield evaporates there, and it's going to be repair drones on the front line. The Dev Tank has been eliminated. It looks like it's all Mechapedes left here, and they're mostly Shard Mechas to try and deal with these cheap, fast, low health units from Shock Trepid. Shock has a really good base to deal with this. Fortunately, that stealth wasn't revealed for very long, and it goes back into stealth mode, so that Harvester will escape for a couple of moments. It is going to... Ooh, upgrades the power plant that's in the most dangerous position. I'm not sure if that's the best move there, as one heroic bike, I think, goes down. No, it stays alive for the current moment. One Mechapede does go down. Master Leaf trying desperately to get some kind of damage. It's mostly just trading army units at this point. Another Mechapede eliminated, but a third does finally go down. Two do remain, and Shock Trepid trades most most of his bike buggy against these mechapedes swings in again gets a bit of splash damage there takes down a bunch of the segments and the heroic bike barely staying alive there just swinging in and out and shock trepid is going to fully commit to the attack master leaf goes for the kill and master leaf will drop the game the gg gets called and master leafs all in one base fast tech doesn't work that power plant snipe from shock trepid was a nice way to un or to tilt Master Leaf, to knock him off balance. And Shock Trepid shows that he won't go down without a fight. 1-1 one, one is the map score. Team East is still in this as we go into game number three. Which takes us to Tournament Crater. It's loser picks map choice. So Master Leaf's old stomping grounds, Tournament Crater. In the north, going for the Shadow Team Rush as the Cyan Marked of Kane. This is Shock Trepid. And in the south, as the Orange Steel Talons. This is Master Leaf. And if I know Master Leaf, I like to think I know him a little bit. I think he has something special planned. 
The guy is a Skrin main. Of course, like all of the top players, he can play any of the nine factions, but when he plays Steel Talons, especially on a map like Tournament Crater, you can bet that he has something in mind. A couple of Rifleman squads going to be going down. Power Plant does get eliminated. And then, of course, you've got to make the choice APC or Pitbull. If you go Pitbull, you get that stealth detection. But when they're on the ground, you don't do much damage to them. So if you go the Pitbull, you hope that they take to the skies. And Master Leaf's build is significantly delayed. I love the addition of the foxholes on the other side of the map, blocking off one of the prime refinery locations of Shock Trepet, and Shock Trepet will run away with his shadow teams. The Pit Bull, of course, gives you the stealth detection, but it does nothing. Ooh, actually, Master Leaf just goes for the low power mode life, and he's actually going to go for power plant after the refinery, so he was uh, not willing to trade out on that refinery to get the power plant out first. And there's the power plant, nice and protected. Watchtower was not queued up behind it, so he will force the sell off there. And of course, that's the trouble with the pit bull. You can't really do any damage to those shadow teams. Super delay on the economy from Shock Trumpet. He is way further behind from this than I thought he was going to be. And uh, he gets his second refinery out now. Watchtower gets added on. I think that's just to jump inside of the MRT. Yep, indeed. And, well, the Shadow Teams are going to be able to escape away to the left corner of the map. They might be back a little bit later to go for some damage against Master Leaf. Maybe try and snipe another power plant. Now, if Master Leaf was going for what I think he was going for, then an airfield would have been the follow-up to this. There's the command post once again on one base in a very central location. And Master Leaf, it appears, is still going to go for one of his flying armor unit surprises exactly which one it is i'm not sure because uh he does a build with gdi okay there's the airfield he does a build with gdi where you bring four or five predator tanks and you drop them right on your opponent's expansion and it's difficult for them to do anything about it first rig is out nothing on the follow-up okay he's adding on something now and shock trepid is going to have a decent idea about all of this i think you might be worth it just suiciding on that power plant that was an upgraded power plant and now it's going to be difficult for these shadow teams to do anything well goodbye Shadow teams are dead. You take it to the skies, and the pit bulls will clean you up. There you go. Pit bulls get the kill. And the power plants do still remain. So unfortunately for Shock Trepid, he may be up 1-1 in map score. He may have evened things up. But uh, if this is a Master Leaf rig rush, he may find it difficult to ever take another base. It's going to be double War Factory on the high ground. No Dozer Blades coming up from the Operations Center, and Shock Trepid is going to try and fight this one out one base to one base. The Orca is here. Uh, Shock Trepid, I guess, could just go for the Blue Tiberium? It looks like he has been harvesting a bit from that Blue Tiberium. It would be even funnier if he sent a Harvester down the left side of the map to steal some of Master Leaf's... Oh my gosh, he's doing that exact thing! That, that uh, was such a bizarre call. That that there's no way that that feels natural to you as a viewer, but I genuinely didn't know that he was doing that. And the orcas come in. This the scorpion tanks do get shredded, and I mean pit bulls, rig orcas. This is a really difficult attack to stop. It looks like the orcas will eventually run out of missiles there. And no, this or this harvester was not actually told to harvest anything. It was just alt clicked down there, so it's just kind of sitting on that blue Tiberium. But if you want to extend your one field as long as you possibly can, and you've got stealth harvesters, why not go for your opponent's blue Tiberium like this? It only really works if you've got stealth harvesters, otherwise they'll probably see you as you pass by their tib spike, and they'll know to go and hunt that harvester real quick. Scorpion tanks are here, air tower is here. Could try and go tier three off of one base. Move towards avatars or something. Master Leaf behind this double refinery on the natural expansion. And it's cutesy move to go for your opponent's blue Tiberium. But obviously the drive time really does mean it's not really worth it. 
Orcas see the blue Tiberium, they see that none of it is moving, and they don't go for the scan to try and snipe any harvesters. Second rig is here. Masterleaf wants to keep up the pressure. The foxhole got dislodged, and one refinery has been established. Bloodhounds get called in. And this is Steel Talon's play, but it's all about pit bulls and orcas, so it almost might as well be... Oh. Might as well be GDI. I'm not sure where that harvester is. He may have made it all the way back home already. As the orcas come in, they're going to be trading against the Sam sites. Both of the orcas end up going down over top of that harvester, still just harvesting away. Laser turrets are here. Rocket squads being added on. And Masterleaf really wishes that he had that double income from that blue Tiberium to help keep up the pressure. Hammerhead coming in. It looks like Masterleaf's pit bulls are just getting eaten up. No Titans, no heavy armor from Masterleaf. The rig breaks apart. The Shadow Team delaying this attack by a huge amount. Masterleaf's harvesters still just sitting stagnant in the bottom left corner of the map in the exact same way that Shock Trepid's harvester was. And Masterleaf will never really realize that there is a missing load of Tiberium from that harvester. A hilarious gaff there by Shock Trepid. Harvester gets pulled off. No damage to the harvester, a little bit of damage to that refinery. And Shock Trepid extended one base play made possible because of that blue Tiberium. Yeah, the drive time is less than ideal. However, that double income off of one base really keeps you alive. One refinery still there on the high ground. Could, of course, sell that off as always. And it is going to be into Mammoth Tanks. The Tier 3 is here. Railguns, we can only assume, are on the way soon. About halfway done, but Masterleaf maybe has a little bit of cash flow problems. And, of course, this, harv this refinery on the front lines on the high ground was a parking lot for a little while. MRT is here. These pit bulls and the MR2 do get spotted out. A couple of uh, random mammoth tanks as well on the right side of the map, and they are just going to trade against these this bike buggy all day. Shock Trepid gets the kill that he cared about. He shut down that expansion point of Masterleaf, and Masterleaf was trying to do the double expand play. Still no railguns just yet would make those bike buggy explode even faster. And Masterleaf SimCity working against him a little bit now as his units take a little bit longer to thread the needle out of his main base. Orchestrike coming back in. Low power mode, I think, for a moment. But it's going to be a blast of a catalyst missile firing off on the other side of the map as the orca strike settles down and masterleaf who was hoping to place that refinery i think at the third instead has to place it back at his natural mammoth tanks closing in from two sides and this is where the debt of shock trepid being on this one base for so long getting almost none of his natural expansion under his control comes to bear emp locks down one of the mammoth tanks avatar on the high ground trying to trade against two other railgun mammoths at the same time and mammoths just going for the crush bloodhounds getting called in and the steel talons will rule the crater once more reverse moving into the firepower of an avatar is just flexing on shock trepid at this point gg gets called and shock trepid will drop game number three master leaf starts out rocky but comes through strong to win the game. Which takes us to Tournament Dust Bowl No Poker with the alternate lighting provided from Masterleaf and has some additional zoom levels as well as the green black hand in the north. This is Masterleaf. Right into the inside of that MCV. What's going on in there? We can just clip right through the stained glass of the not MCV. And in the south, as the cyan marked of Kane, this is Shock Trepid. Playing strong in this series, but when it's Tournament Crater and it's Master Leaf, you have to watch out because the guy has more creative builds than anyone else in Kane's Wrath. 
He has more ideas of how to play Kane's Wrath differently than anyone else. If you want sheer brute strength, sure, Bike Rush owns is the top. Flame Tank Rush coming out from Master Leaf. He's black hand, so it fits with the theme. The guy literally plays thematically with the faction. But you want sheer firepower? Okay, sure, whatever. Bike Rush. But you want creativity and you want intrigue. Sometimes in spectacular failure, you go for Master Leaf. And in this case, I don't know what he's doing. I don't remember one black hand Reckoner Rush being a build on the guides, but he's going to pick up an Engineer as well, and I guess that is the play. You get the black hand, you get the potential of burning something down, and then you get the Engineer. And this is one of those things where Master Leaf is going to try and... Uh, okay, he's going to get... He's, the Reckoner's going to lock down, but unfortunately for Master Leaf, he had a great idea, and it just didn't quite work out as well as he had hoped. And of course, the Black Hand Squad is just over there running around. And of course, Shock Trumpet is like, what's uh, what's going on there? And the Engineer ejects. Master Leaf is... It, no, don't. Let the, send the buggy. Send the buggy. Okay, whew. Send the buggy. Don't shoot at it as you drive by with bikes. That's never going to work. Harvester is going to go for the crush? What are you doing there? Okay, there we go. Harvester goes for the crush. Master Leaf getting locked down at the natural... But it's actually going to be double black hand. He's sold off another operation center, it seems. And one bike does get burned down. Literally so paper thin their armor is that it gets ignited by a black hand member. Master Leaf with a rocky start. But okay, a weird finish as well. A weird follow up as he drops a double war factory. And he's going to commit to the attack with his random black hand squads that are still here. He might be able to get the kill on this Tib Spike. I guess we will see. Scorpion Tank goes for the crush. And uh, literally one black hand member is left. Of course, if he goes for the Black Disciple upgrade, then that Cabal Squad could burn down the Tib Spike. It would just take a while. MCV moving out through the middle of the map. Master Leaf may want to play this literally on one base and just see what luck gets him. Actually, sells off one of the War Factories, so he gets a little bit of a cash infusion there. His production is going to be cut down severely because of that, but he's going to deploy a Hand of Nod. I don't know what, uh, what Master Leaf is doing. He is going for a build that is not in the books yet. Refinery on the natural expansion for Shock Trepid, and he has got that second War Factory at his main, but at least he's got three refineries to support it, and he's got a backup plan. If his main base runs out of cash, he can go somewhere else. Shock Trepid sneaking a couple of bikes past the defense of Master Leaf. This is enough bikes to jump on a high Harvester. He can dive, and he can go for the suicide if he wants. We'll see how good the juking is. We'll see how good the positioning is. A couple of Scorpion Tanks are here. The Buggies do absorb the first round of shots, and the bikes can dive. They can go for the Suicide if they want. They get one Harvester full of Tiberium, cutting down Master Leaf's economy even more. Sonic, uh, Secret Shrine has been seen. Double Hand of Nod in the middle of the map. He sold off the one over there, and he replaced them in the middle, and he's got one in each direction. So Master Leaf is going to war. He is going right down the middle of the map, and actually killing this power plant might be a nice move. I think Master Leaf is already low on power, and sending him even further into debt power-wise would just keep him offline even longer. Sells off the Hand of Nod. EMPs might be really clutch. We'll see if, it, if Shock Trepid is able to make it happen. Another Harvester gets sniped. Shock Trepid finds the damage down to just two Harvesters. One refinery worth of economy functionally for Master Leaf. He's got to make this attack happen. And the defense so far is well established by Shock Trepid. EMPs should be firing off when each of these Shredder turrets gets sold off. 
as the Scorpion versus Scorpion battle would be really helped out by some critical EMPs from Shock Trepid. Double Hand of Nod as the follow-up. He's got the Black Disciples as well. Master Leaf doesn't have a natural expansion, but he's got enough cash to keep this going for another minute or two. Three Scorpions explode as they get locked down by an EMP, but it's more about the infantry right now for Master Leaf. The Crush comes through, the Dozer Blades finish up, and Shock Trepid is looking to say, I am not dying in this series. The score will be two to two as Shock Trepid takes the game and takes game four away from Master Leaf. The economy just exploding at the end there for Shock Trepid. Four, 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 as he locks down an additional 13,000 credits. Master Leaf's got the plays, he's got the builds, but they don't always work, and it sends us on an even footing into game number five. And that takes us to Tournament Los Angeles, another map that has been the feature of many fantastic games in the last two years, as the Red Steel Talons in the north give it up for Master Leaf. Where are you going, Engineer? Where are you going? Because it looks like he might be headed to this mutant hovel over here or the EMP control center that's over there. But in the south, evening up the score 2-2 and giving himself an opportunity to make the comeback happen for his team, this is Shock Trepid. Shock hoping to score oh, the first win for Team East. There have been some close ones. It is going to be the Mutant Hovel. Master Leaf is the only player that when he plays Steel Talents, you go, is this really fair? It feels kind of abusive that he's playing Steel Talents. Everyone else, it's like, oh, you're going to play Mark of Cain or GDI. Of course, back in the day when Bike Rush played Black Hand, it felt like, ah, this is kind of abusive. Yeah, I'm not sure that this is really a fair match. But when Master Leaf chooses Steel Talons, it's like... This might be kind of abusive. I'm not sure that this is a fair match. Master Leaf going for the double refinery into the expand. So thus far, nothing too wild is happening. It could be a fake out for a command post, but I don't know that that's really a worthwhile <laughs> fake out to drive two seconds if he is going command post and not going power plant. He is drafting a watchtower. And ready to go somewhere. Shock Trepid pivoting into GDI, which I don't think I actually mentioned in the very beginning. All right, it's MRTs with mutants. Master Leaf is going to try for the memes. Is he going flying memes, though? That's the real question. And Shock Trepid is going to kind of spot this. I don't know if he will see it exactly, but he will have an idea of what is going on. He is also going to spot that the natural expansion has nothing going on. And, well, Shock Trepid himself is going for a one base tech. It doesn't look like he has AP ammo, and he's got nothing upgrading out of his tech center. So this could be, like, fast firehawks or something, but I think it's just going to be, like, mammoth tanks or juggernauts or maybe even a fast one base marv. I'm not sure what Shock Trepid has planned, but I guess this is going to be his chance to disrupt Master Leaf's Mutant MRT build. The scan comes down from Master Leaf. It is a one base Marv oriented along the southern edge of the map, and Shock Trepid is truly pivoting. I mean, out of Mark of Cain and into GDI, going for a one base Marv. A weird and wonky series this is turning into. Um, all right, pit bulls come in. They do manage to do a bit of damage, but of course, MRTs are flying. Slingshots are here as well. Tungsten shell would actually probably be a worthwhile upgrade to prioritize over railguns in this case. The tier three does get spotted. The MCV move over to the expansion does get spotted. Master Leaf knows what is going on. He sees the shape of the game. But honestly, uh, I'm not sure what his follow-up is going to be. 
AA battery gets deployed. Slingshot is here. The thing about the flying MRT is that it doesn't have a lot of health and it doesn't have a lot of damage versus buildings. So a couple of slingshots are here. The Marv is now out on the field as we hear, and I think that is going to be kind of the economic focus of Shock Trepid. He's hoping that he can go for some kind of a just pile on of Tiberium. He's going to kind of get a natural expansion. He's going to kind of get a third by going for the Marvist of that field. Meanwhile, Master Leaf steals the blue Tiberium out of the middle of the map. That is his choice for his own natural expansion to try and get it online. Well, Titans are headed right for the natural of Shock Trepid. He's going to have four Titans waiting for him very soon, and he's going to have to come up with a creative way to break that attack. Orca's now coming out. Master Leaf going full crazy mode. He has forced his opponent into a bunch of into a bunch of slingshots and delayed the real natural expansion. The Marv is getting dangerously close to actually be able to Marvist that field. Orcas come in, they get tagged by that mammoth tank and this Titan attack has been shut down. Master Leaf is faltering a little bit here. He is gonna catch the Marv over on the right side of the map, but again, mutants just don't have a lot of DPS versus the big heavy stuff. They have decent DPS versus Harvesters. When you've got five or six mutant squads against Harvesters, they do actually have decent DPS. They are going to unload here as the Firehawks come through. Try and go for the kill on the Firehawks. Make these slingshots obsolete as Masterleaf pivots his tactic and goes for something different. Shock Trepid does not alt-click his Marv through that field multiple times, so it's just sitting there useless as anything. And no EMP control centers have been grabbed just yet by either player. Shock Trepid heads back through that field as Master Leaf backs off with those MRTs. He spent a lot of cash on these MRTs and he has not necessarily gotten what he was hoping for. In this case, Foxhole in the north, Rifleman inside of the Ox Transport. MRTs pull back once again. Eco of Shock Trepid is being fed by that Marv, being helped by this natural expansion. And I guess at the very least, it's going to force Master Leaf to expand over here. So Shock Trepid can be sure of that. But this is the pace setting game. All three Orcas get caught there as the Firehawks close the distance. The MRTs are back in the sky and the slingshots are where? Closing in as they close in on these Firehawks. They're going to have to go back down onto the ground. APC on the ground as well as another MRT explodes. The Mammoth Tank's getting a couple of shots in there and and Master Leaf's forces are getting dangerously thin. His build is not working out. He was hoping to stomp all over this expansion with Titans, and he has not been able to. Orca Strike crossing the map. He doesn't have rail guns yet, but he has a ton of Titans. He's harvested most of his natural expansion, and he is on his way to the third. It looks like it's going to be trading blows as these Orca Strike cross the map for each player. That Harvester barely surviving. The last MRT lands on the ground, and the Firehawks get cleaned up by the mutants. Land and air, both targeting systems work very well. One random zone trooper inside of this Marv from the sell-off of the Reclamator Hub. Master Leaf has spotted the MCV of Shock Trepid over there at the third base location. And the last APC goes down. The last MRT gets eliminated. And this double vet mutant marauder finally goes down. Railguns purchased by actually just shock trap it in a game with a steel talons where the first person to get rail guns is actually going to be shock trap it as master leaf marches his titan army haphazardly into the natural expansion of shock trap and he goes for the crush he gets one harvester he gets one predator tank as well but the mammoths are closing in no it's more predator tanks as only one mammoth is down here in this southern expansion shock trap it has his own forces moving in at the natural expansion of Master Leaf and the Firehawks clear out of here. They're scared of these Titans. Still no railguns on the side of Master Leaf. The Mammoths are scaring away as well as the Marv scaring away this MCV of Master Leaf and it's going to be a bit of a trade, a bit of a swap of bases 
a natural expansion for a natural expansion, but Master Leaf isn't quite stopping just yet. The Crush comes through. One of those Predator tanks falls to the Crush. One of them falls to just the good old-fashioned Titan firepower as Master Leaf keeps up the pressure, but the third base goes unassaulted. The Marv closing in on the natural of Master Leaf, and he's going to clean up the tech that is here denying Master Leaf the opportunity to go for that Tier 3 to get those railguns up and running. Master Leaf now starting to contend the third by sniping a Harvester over there. His Titans have completely destroyed the entire main base of Shock Trepid, but he leaves a couple of power plants. He leaves the tech of Shock Trepid alive as well. Master Leaf's main base is getting cleared. Master Leaf is running out of space to hide, running out of space to run. Four Firehawks possibly loaded with bombs, waiting for that MCV to deploy. This noose is getting tighter as Shock Trepid has some place to hide. He has a base to return to, but it's going to be actually anti-air missiles as these Firehawks, I think, desperately are going to try and switch over two bombs, but it's just feeling like too many buildings for Shock Trepid. Master Leaf has one power power plant in the north don't make the same mistake oh no that eclipse made on this same mac map the mutant hovel counts as a building as well master leaf is gonna try and win a war of attrition but it's four firehawks did they get off the deck firehawks come through they clear out the the hammerhead the mcb is gonna get just absolutely annihilated here it gets crushed what were you thinking i guess there was an engineer there as master leaf's engineer gets cleaned up the marv is coming in for shock trepid and he's gonna lose because of a power plant and a mutant hovel on the other side of the map master leaf closes in so few buildings remain and shock trepid loses the game Master Leaf down to that last refinery. He knew it and he had it because of the spread. Shock Trepid, the engineer play. Oh, those Firehawks never loaded with bombs. Master Leaf takes the 3 2 map score, putting him in striking distance of the win. Which takes us to the presence of Commander Havoc here on Tournament undergrounds as these two players have gone toe to toe strike to strike but it's closing out on the last two games as the blue gdi in the bottom left hand corner this is master leaf once again playing steel talons and as the cyan gdi Sticking with his new choice, this is Shock Trepid. Shock Trepid representing Team East well, but now it's down to the wire. He has to win the next two games in a row to stop the bleeding, to prevent Master Leaf from continuing the Team West domination. Again, the overall match score has a zero on one side, which makes it feel very one-sided. But so many of these series, the 2v2 last week, the 1v1 between Dimitri and Futurama could have gone either way. The 2v2 this week could have gone either way. Just incredible performances by every one of these eight players. Uh-oh, Shock Trepid. Uh, hey, the engineer is supposed to jump inside of that. Okay, there's a second. There's a third engineer. What is going on here? Triple engineer coming out from Shock Trepid. I hope that wasn't a mistake, and I think he's going to try and take the tip spikes in the middle of the map. But uh, Master Leaf actually walks the long way and gets there first. So Master Leaf is going to claim that tip spike cash bounty. And, well, I guess we'll see what these other engineers are for, exactly what Shock Trepid has planned for them. And one of them, I guess, is just making his way to Master Leaf's base. Master Leaf going for the expansion. MRT is out, but there's no guns waiting on these buildings. Okay, he gets finally a rifleman squad out. Master Leaf is going to have something to push away that engineer. Engineer jumps inside of the second APC, and I guess it's up for shock treatment to try and get the 
get the capture on something with these how many engineers did this guy build he built like four or five engineers right out of the start of this game that's enough to delay his extra refinery by a good amount and Shock Trumpet kind of going all in here. I guess we'll see how far the spread goes. It's going to be an Orca Strike coming in here from Master Leaf, but Shock Trumpet forces the pack up of the MCV over there, and Master Leaf is going to deploy a rig even master leaf is going kind of all out with this he's got a rifleman inside of that mrt and shock trepid is actually going to take the airfield the orca strike will not happen and master leaf is gonna have this rig his mcv getting chased by this lone engineer inside of this m inside of this apc and master leaf trying desperately to get out of watchtower finally he does and now the mcv might just be safe there but the engineer shenanigans may not totally be over if a war factory gets claimed it could still be a significant move for shock trepid too many watchtowers it feels like but steel talons not having guns on harvesters and not having guns on the apc does definitely present a present a bit of a problem in dealing with early engineer plays like this Second watchtower gets established, or second, second airfield gets established there. And actually, Shock Trepid goes for a, for a hammerhead there, trying to mix this up. He's got Predator tanks closing in as well. He's turning this into a do-or-die situation. So much aggressive aggression coming out here from Shock Trepid. So much cash spent on engineers, and he is going to go for it. This rig is gonna give so much more survivability to the forces of Master Leaf, but let's see. APC goes down there at the base. Engineer does get sniped. Nicely done with that slingshot by Shock Trepid. Second slingshot may be necessary. Let's see how many orcas come out. It's going to be all four for Master Leaf, and he is hoping to get even another engineer out onto the field flying around somewhere. Foxhole in the back of Master Leaf's base, and Master Leaf is the one who has, well, up to a certain point, not been screwing around building an infinite number of engineers, but now it actually kind of seems like he has built almost as many engineers. Rig steps forward onto the map, giving a point of repair for these units shock trepid now with triple slingshot looking for those orcas hunting for those orcas three orcas back at home master leaf moving out with his titans hoping to uh, just crush the harvesters and the predators of shock trepid and that may be exactly what happens shock trepid is still sitting on one base he's actually gone for a tech center he's hoping to go mammoths and he's gonna get his first mammoth out onto the field slingshots are gonna shred those orcas another engineer crossing the map once again for master leaf not sure where the or the engineer actually ended up master leaf looking desperately for an opportunity to do some real damage but the one base tier three tech from shock trepid may have actually been a brilliant move we'll see if he's able to survive he's got this marv once again it didn't work last time but he's trying to disrupt master leaf he's trying to go for something a bit different and these harvesters are gonna get crushed these harvesters are gonna get targeted as the orcas come back in the slingshots able to cut them down and returning from the blue tiberia master leaf is gonna want to stop that harvester the slingshots get crushed one two of them go down the third one takes a ton of damage and shock trumpet is gonna try desperately to get this blue tiberium unloaded from this harvester is tournament life on the line the hope of stopping the bleeding on the line and it looks like the Harvester is going to go down there as that Blue Tiberium will not be refined. Master Leaf keeping up the pressure, his own natural expansion on the way. The Reclamator Hub has been established, but the Marv keeps getting paused. I guess just cancel whatever's at this War Factory so that you can finish your Marv. And then at least you could sell off the Reclamator Hub that gives you a cash boost and the Zone Trooper inside of that. Also, probably sell this war, this airfield over here. I can't believe that Shock Trepid still has that out on this map when he is so low on cash. Scan does reveal the Marv for Master Leaf. Orca Strike comes in, kind of a random spot, but it still tags one of the Harvesters right there near the middle of the field. 
Master Leaf transitioning all of his harvesters over to that natural expansion. Shock Trepid might just try and go all in. He's not going north to try and Marvist that field up there. Orcas catch the Juggernaut in the middle of the map. Four Orcas here. They're going to snipe the, heart, the husk as well. Master Leaf sewing up as many of the possibilities as he can. Power Plant still taking damage over there on the left side of the map. Random MRT and a random Titan walking through the middle of the map, but the Marv will catch them. Master Leaf is just trying to outproduce Shock Trepid, and he's also gone tier three as well. The Behemoths are here. Orcas trading against the Pit Bulls. If you're Master Leaf, that's probably a fine trade because Master Leaf actually has, you know, a second base economy. This airfield is still here. I think Shock Trepid must have just forgotten that it was there. Otherwise, he probably would have sold it off. I love the idea of having an, an airfield on your opponent's side of the map, but how is that going to help you win the game? Shockwave Artillery, it's going to catch the Marv. Unless the RNG is terrible, he barely does get it there. Orca's coming in. Juggernauts are here. The Behemoth laying waste to that Marv. And the Engineer is going to try and climb in there to save the Marv, but it won't be enough. The GG won't be long from now as Master Leaf just shreds those pit bulls. What more hope does Shock Trepid have? The MCV stands alone against everything that Master Leaf has. The win streak will continue as Master Leaf takes a 4-2 win over Shock Trepid. Team West showing true domination in the match score. Not always in the map score, but that means we have one more match to get to. One last 1v1 to finish out East versus West. And that means for the third and final series, we are back on Tournament Odyssey for game number one, the last best of seven for East versus West. In the North as the Red GDI, this is Bike Rush Owns. And in the south, as the green marked of Cain, this is Eclipse. Now, some of you are going to be wondering, why is it Bike Rush versus Eclipse instead of it being Phoenix versus Eclipse? And, well... There was a scheduling problem, is the end of it. Uh, Eclipse apparently couldn't be there on the day when Phoenix was supposed to, was scheduled to play him, so then it was rescheduled, but then Phoenix couldn't make it the other day, so then Bike Rush stepped in to play. So it's going to be Bike Rush versus Eclipse in a best of seven. Obviously, in this situation, Bike Rush is favored. Phoenix may have also been favored against Eclipse. That's a bit more of a toss-up, a bit more dicey. Uh, I was about to say, no EMP? Come on, on this APC, you had like 45 squads around him, and you got one EMP off. Now, of course, the riflemen inside the APC aren't EMP'd which is why he was able to clean up those other squads before any additional EMPs came through. And yeah, Eclipse is not favored against Bike Rush Owns, but he may have been favored against Phoenix. That's the one where I'm not so sure. Like, Phoenix has been playing phenomenally since coming back, taking some games off of Futurama, playing well in the 2v2s, and, you know, some pretty good 1v1s. Bike Rush Owns going to be taking a little bit of damage from these bikes that come in. Looks like one Harvester may be going down. No, one Harvester will be surviving. Low on health, but ultimately fine. Bike Rush Owns ready to rock and roll at that natural expansion as MCV is eventually going to get over their Eclipse a little bit faster on that timing. He commits a couple of bikes to the attack, loses them all, and just delays the mining. So it feels already like Eclipse is falling a bit behind, but three bikes isn't the end of the world. 
Now, of course, this show match, this particular matchup, Eclipse versus Bike Rush, doesn't have an impact on the payouts. Uh, well, I guess Master League versus Shock Trepid didn't have an effect on the payouts either. Once the series is, you know, once it goes 4-0 in favor of Team West, they get the prize money. These are the additional matches, so we still get to see who is going to win this. Eclipse could win this, and it would very well uh, not change the payout. It would still be a 4-2 or a 5-1, to one, I guess, actually which would almost make it look like it's a best of nine in terms of matches. But we do still get to see a best of seven between Bike Rush and Eclipse, which I think will be an entertaining series regardless. Eclipse coming in, got a couple of bikes mixed in. Five bikes going on the aggression. And, uh, well, I'm not sure he's really going to be able to get too much done versus the Pitbulls, Watchtowers, APCs, and Riflemen of Bike Rush owns. Refinery into Second War Factory over at the Natural Expansion. Meanwhile, Eclipse going Double War Factory in the main, follows it up with a refinery, now a double refinery at the Natural. So his economy is eventually going to get up and running, but I'm not sure that just playing a straight down the middle kind of a game on Tournament Odyssey is going to win him this series against Bike Rush Owns. I feel like he's going to need to bring out something a little bit more specialized, a little bit more prepared, and a little bit, uh, feeling a little crisper than these attacks are to be able to take down Bike Rush Owns. Power Plant getting targeted. Always love this kind of a move, but Eclipse will deal with it. He'll be able to take down that Rifleman squad. And for the current moment, Eclipse is well set up on his natural expansion. This is the point where Bike Rush Owns is going to start to test his defense. And of course, on this map in particular, Bike Rush Owns is one of those guys who will double expand. He'll take his third and your third at the same time, basically, just to screw with you. We do have a couple of bikes on the north side of the map as well. Bike Rush Owns is tracking that. Maybe he's not as he turns his forces around a little bit, reverse moves them back into the field, and uh, maybe a bit of an accidental Q move coming in there from Bike Rush Owns, but he will be able to defend any forces that are in the on the northern edge of the map. Uh, I hope Eclipse doesn't walk down this ramp. He does turn around, fortunately, and all of the bikes head away without taking any damage. Orca Strike comes in. He's going to tag that power plant. If only it was a Zorka Strike, it would have had a better chance of doing some more damage. Bike Rush Owns goes multi-MCV. War Factory sold off at the main, and he decides to get his Tier 3 up, and it might just be a Sonic Emitter kind of a push for the win. The multi-MCV has really been making a comeback competitively in the last couple of months. If people play tournament matches, it feels like the multi-MCV is their preferred style. Catalyst Missile fires off. It is going to catch one refinery back at the natural expansion. A good catch there for Eclipse to shut down the second half of the eco for Bike Rush's natural. He's only got half of that Tiberium field. And so the remaining half is going to be a bit slower to harvest. Stealth Tank does sneak by that Reclamator hub, so Eclipse will know what is out on the way headed for him. Refinery gets reestablished at the Natural, and Bike Rush Owns is going to have a Redeemer Engineering facility to deal with as he's going to have a Redeemer out on the field relatively soon to fight. Eclipse trading bikes and buggies against these pit bulls. I think a bit of a mistake since he was just letting these units sit here and not doing anything with them. And now these pit bulls are just going to overwhelm those forces. Bike Rush Owns moving in at the natural expansion. Doesn't quite catch the MCV, but he will have an opportunity to potentially shut down this Redeemer before it comes out. I don't think he has enough firepower to actually lock it down as the Shredder Truck gets com comes up and the supercharged particle beams have already been purchased. The Redeemer will come out onto the field. Bike Rush owns losing basically everything in this assault. And the Redeemer has risen. There's the sell-off immediately. The Tib 
Chemical Troopers jump into that Redeemer. Pitbulls cycling through the main base of Eclipse. And where are those Marked of Cain EMPs? We had better see some of them to help him deal with these Pitbulls or some more Shredder turrets potentially. But these power plants getting targeted down. APC in the mix as well. Just a rifleman inside of that APC. No additional units. No engineer or anything sneaky like that. It's going to be double Sonic Emitter versus double Obelisk. Who is the king of the multi-MCV? Well, it's not the guy on the low power mode. The EMP does lock down one of the Sonic Emitters. And the Obelisk gets the final shot on the other one. But that double splash damage on the Sonic on the Obelisks is extremely nice for Bike Rush owns. Every shot from the Sonic Emitter hits both Obelisks, so he gets double the damage basically right out of the gate. Zone Troopers coming forward. They are going to get a little bit cleaned up here. You should really send them inside of his Marv if he's brought them along. Otherwise, they're just going to die to that Redeemer. And the Redeemer closing in on them, or them closing in on the Redeemer, rather, will be their doom. Bike Rush owns Marvists the third field of Eclipse while taking his own expansion in the north. And it's Sonic Emitters in mass with a couple of juggernauts here to fight against Eclipse. No specters, no beam cannons, not enough EMPs. Eclipse is going to lose this third base. His MCV down below half health. And the, uh, the Obelisks might actually be able to get a couple of kills on the juggernauts here, but they won't be able to save the MCV. And they won't do anything against the Marv on the other side of the map. More Obelisks getting established, but there's too many juggernauts here. Too many Sonic emitters as well. Engineers coming up from Bike Rush Owns to cap those husks and to bring them back online. One refinery is here. Eclipse is almost out of cash and he doesn't have much left to deal with Bike Rush Owns. The GG gets called. The first game goes to Bike Rush and Eclipse is going to be facing an uphill climb. That was Tournament Odyssey, a non-favored map. And will map number two favor Eclipse a little bit more. Which takes us to Tournament Dust Bowl to find the answer to that question. In the North, playing Black Hand this time as the Green. Give it up for Eclipse! And of course that means that in the South as the Red GDI. This is Bike Rush Owns. What's inside of that GDI MCV? Not a whole lot. That's the answer. A couple of hexagons just hanging out in there. GDI versus Black Hand. Eclipse not finding much luck with Mark of Kane. Decides to pivot into Black Hand. We'll see if he's actually able to make anything more robust happen here. Tib spikes in the corners, of course. And we'll see if Eclipse has anything prepped. Sometimes these guys come into these events, it's like they have no plan. They're up against Bike Rush, and it's like, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to do the regular thing that Bike Rush beats in practice games nine times out of ten. And I'm going to do that four games in a row, and we'll see how it goes. Unfortunately... That probably won't work, but we will see what Eclipse is going for. For now, it looks pretty bog-standard, nod sort of opening. Everything's looking macro-oriented, normal openers that we've come to know and love for close to a decade here in Kane's Wrath. I don't know how quickly this kind of an opener was established in the original meta of the game, but... Kane's Wrath is probably old enough that the meta has come to this two, uh, it's like power plant, barracks, refinery, war factory, refinery kind of a build order relatively quickly. So it probably is full 10 years old, this style of opening. And it will never change. I mean, functionally, there's no reason for it to. Eclipse and Bike Rush Owns going to keep each other honest with a couple of scouts. Pitbull coming out from Bike Rush Owns, cycling around the map. And, of course, the same sort of a thing from the buggy from Eclipse. Well, we'll see. Eclipse has another buggy. 
first refinery over at the natural expansion for Eclipse. Bike Rochon's a little bit later on it, but not significantly as he deploys his second refinery there. Or his first refinery at the natural, rather. And this is the opportunity that Eclipse has to wow us, to show us something a little bit different. Second War Factory at the Natural is going to play it out in a very standard way. And I guess he feels that that is where he has the best chance of beating Bike Rush. I'm actually kind of surprised that it's not like a fast tech to one clicks or something. I feel like that would be one way to potentially throw Bike Rush off is to do a one click at his natural. He's gonna get this third, this one harvester. He does commit to it. He drives around the Tib silo and he gets the kill. A nice cleanup there by Eclipse. He gets one harvester. He forces a little bit of an over response from Bike Rush Owns. Ultimately, one harvester is not going to be enough to uh, completely win the game for him. Behind this, Eclipse is, I assume, going to go two base for one clicks, and then he'll click down one of the refineries, and that will be his introduction to the late game. Command post comes up for... Why did he sell that power plant? That's a little bit bizarre. He does get the upgrade on the power plants, so I guess he technically doesn't need that additional power plant, but it seems weird that if he has it already, that he decided to sell it. I don't know that that cash back from it was, uh, you know, a game-changing kind of a move. Tier 2 is up, and certainly Tier 3, I assume, will be on the way. It's going to be into Orcas, and that means we do have Hammerheads as well. I'm assuming Orcas, but it could be Firehawks, I guess. Bike Rush Owns goes multi-MCV once again. Eclipse goes multi-MCV. I mean, they are different factions, but they're playing the exact same build almost. The only slight difference is that we do have an airfield coming out from Bike Rush Owns. A couple of uh, decoy units here in this army, but there's also some real units cleaning up a hammerhead, cleaning up one of the harvesters as well. And this is almost certainly the prelude to the one-click coming in. A couple of Harvesters taking some damage, two Harvesters going down, one of them might be damaged even further if a Catalyst Missile comes in. Will Bike Rush get the sale? No, he doesn't. One Refinery down, and that was, that's about as good of damage as you could possibly hope for against Bike Rush. Now, it doesn't do much to stop this Reclamator, this Marv on the way, but... It does slow down the Marv. The Marv may be delayed a little bit because of that massive dip in income. Three Harvesters going down in total over the course of this game and a refinery. Seed Tiberium comes in, going to extend out the life of that main. Ooh, another Hammerhead going down. Bike Rush owns donating those away for free. And honestly, I don't know that uh, Eclipse wants to fight this army straight up. It feels like Eclipse might want to try and sneak something around the side, either an engineer or a couple of flame tanks, try and sneak them around somewhere so that he can do damage in the back door of Bike Rush, maybe burn down some tech, force Bike Rush to rebuild that and to respond instead of allowing Bike Rush to go on the offensive. Because right now, Bike Rush owns is going to be going Marv on the left and Expansion on the right. He's going to need some Juggernauts to back up this Marv if he wants to be able to really clean up Eclipse quickly. But we'll see what Eclipse is able to bring over on the right side of the map. First Sonic Emitter is down. Par Charge Particle Beam Shredder Turret gets established as well. And of course, no easy EMPs this time for Eclipse. So if he sells off those Shredders, he doesn't get as much value for them. Sonic Emitter doing a good job of cleaning up that Obelisk with the help of those Predator Tanks. And Bike Rush Owns has this Marv powered up. And Eclipse is going to have about half of a Tiberium Field left 
after Bike Rush gets done marvesting it. And of course, that is a lot of Sonic emitters for Bike Rush to add in. Bike Buggy swings in. They do find one Juggernaut here, loose and unprotected, and they do smash into that Sonic emitter getting a kill there so that Obelisk can stand strong a little bit longer. Engineer will be out. Double War Factory on the right side for Bike Rush owns. And I think maybe one of those War Factors was supposed to be over here on the left side. He's not even producing from both of them. Bike Buggy swings in. Eclipse is just going to try and mass overwhelm Bike Rush owns with cheap Tier 1 units. He's got those late game upgrades, so they do great damage. And he has an opportunity before Bike Rush owns gets fully powered up on three bases, he could potentially overwhelm Bike Rush with pure numbers. And Eclipse has been defeated. The GG gets called. And he does not want to fight that one out any longer. No cash on the map. I just realized that he was completely out of money. And Bike Rush Owns was just choking him out. He literally was uh, starting to flatline at the end there. And Bike Rush Owns just had that Marv to be able to slowly ho hoover up that field. That will do it for game number two. Things are not looking well for Eclipse. Which brings us to the Walrus Man of Tiki Turmoil becoming one of my favorite maps for competitive Kane's Wrath as the green black hand in the north. This is Eclipse representing Team East and hoping to get their only win of the tournament and representing Team West here to hopefully close it out with a perfect match score. This is is Bike Rush Owns. The map score between these two teams is much more contested. Bike Rush Owns did have a clean 4-0 last week against Drive, but the other series went 4-3 and 4-2. Much more contested. And I mean, even the 2v2 this week went 4-3, and then the 1v1 went 4-2, so they were still just as contested. The, the, of course, overall match score is 100% in favor of Team West, which it is what it is. Dimitri had an amazing performance. Bike Rush Owns did well enough. Master Leaf brought the pain with Steel Talons. And last week, Phoenix was great in the 2v2 as well. But Team East has also been awesome. They have brought a bunch of cool games and cool plays just maybe not so much in enough of the series to win the overall thing. And, uh, well, Drive versus Bike Rush was not so stellar last week. But Eclipse versus Bike Rush, I guess we'll see. <laughs> it's still ongoing, but I'm super happy with how most of these games have turned out. The 2v2 teams did phenomenally earlier today. And of course, a big thanks to Big Mole for organizing this whole thing, for bringing East versus West to life and for uh, having the idea and then scheduling it all and getting the players together and also starting off that prize pool. Okay, MCV moves to the natural expansion. Operation Center gets added on. Is this just for some flame tanks or is there something else up the sleeve of Eclipse? If it's flame tanks, then this is a bizarre delayed flame tank rush. And we'll have to see if the delay in flame does bring any sort of advantage. It is going to be a one flame tank. He might just keep the operation center around. It's a hand of nod as well. He's strapped for cash, though. He didn't cut harvesters to make this happen, so he's just a little bit lower on cash than he normally would be. Perhaps he upgraded power plants or something. He goes secret shrine as well. Uh, I'm not... 100% sure it could be purifying flame it could be black disciples either one is a viable upgrade with this kind of build that he's doing second flame tank comes out okay so eclipse is trying something truly different here a delayed flame tank rush but it does get spotted bike rush owns with the scout on the north side of the map and this is one where that scout is so good that far away that it gives bike rush owns a solid 30 seconds to be able to respond to this Harvesters getting targeted, a little bit of splash doing damage to two Harvesters at once. Black Hand Squads getting added into these Rocket Squads. 
squads as well. Bike Rochon's going to be trying to chase down this... What in the world? Bike Rush Jones has basically nothing here. This flame tank walks into Bike Rush's base completely unprepared. And Bike Rush Jones now going to be following it up with a hammerhead. So he will at least have the hammerhead to kill this flame tank eventually. But I think one of these upgraded power plants or maybe the airfield or maybe the command post will go down. Eclipse needs to make a decision. He force fires in between the building. He gets the air tower and he gets half of the health from that command post. Orca Strike comes in. A complete miss there by Bike Rush Jones. And through the middle of the map, a couple of rocket squads trade out with the pit bulls. They clean them up, and they're looking for them. A couple of hammerheads to potentially run down and destroy. A second flame tank is somewhere out on the map. I don't know exactly where, but a second flame tank is somewhere roaming around hunting for that target. Eclipse now going to sneak out an additional blue... Okay, it's in the south. He's going to sneak out a Harvester to go get that blue Tiberium. A couple of Mantises are being added on. Flame Tank goes down without anything being done. The natural expansion has been significantly delayed by both players, but the Flame Tanks were an intentional delay from Eclipse to Bike Rush Owns. Hammerhead swinging in. Mantises are hopefully in defensive position. No, but a Sam turret is here and ready to go. Bike Rush Jones does not split his hammerheads. He takes pretty full damage across all three of them from that Sam site. No more additional flame tanks. Killing one of the air fields as well does cut down the hammerhead production. Some players will go double airfield until they get five or six hammerheads and then they'll sell off one of the airfields. Harvester getting targeted down. No stealth to be able to escape. Good kill there by Bike Rush Owns. Finds a lucky strike with that blue Tiberium Harvester. Orca Strike getting called in by Bike Rush Owns. He may be able to tag a Harvester there as it unloads Tiberium. Bike Rush Owns have one loose shatter. I'm not sure where that guy was hanging out. Harvester does dodge the Orca Strike. That is something that players did not used to do. I don't remember players years ago dodging Orca Strikes, and now, kind of like microing your Harvesters, sending them out to specific patches so that they don't delay as much when they're coming off of a refinery, that's a lot more common than it used to be. And dodging Orca Strikes with your Harvesters is one of those things that players have started doing really consistently. It's a little bit surprising when an Orca Strike goes completely unchecked. Usually they'll at least try something. Bike Rush Owns about to donate a Harvester. He's got a couple of Rocket Squads to contend with as uh, Shock Trepid Eclipse, rather, excuse me, is going to find a kill there. Well done by Bike Rush Owns donating away a Harvester to the Eclipse Relief Fund. Marv is on the way. Multi-MCV, it's the only build to go for. And I mean, at this point, everyone is doing it all the time. Sonic Mentor gets deployed, but that's a scout for the Catalyst missile. Does maybe a little bit of damage to that Sonic Mentor just from, like, pure splash. Orca Strike getting called in as well, trying to tr catch the Harvesters as they transition. And that's a Scorpion tank that is going for an MCV. Harvester does get tagged by that one. Orca Strike does get a good bit of damage against that Harvester. Hammerheads should probably clean up that, uh, that Scorpion tank real quickly just to stop it from doing any more damage to that MCV. A couple of zone heads mixed in here as well, so they're going to be able to shut down those SAM sites. But behind this, Eclipse is getting a third in the north, potentially taking Bike Rush's third. And oh, the zone raiders inside of those, the zone troopers inside of one of those hammerheads do get sniped. Not all of the hammerheads have zone troopers inside of them. And Eclipse would probably do well to get a refinery in the north just to steal some of that Tiberium away from Bike Rush and make sure that he's got a late game transition plan. 
Mike Rajon's already vacuuming up much of this Tiberium. Marvistine eclipses third field. Double Engineer going to jump inside of that Marv as well. Tibcor clears out another two hammerheads as Bike Rush Jones flies a little too close to the Tiberian Sun as Bike Rush Jones gets his wings clipped. Rifleman committing into the attack. Sniper team's getting called in as well. Triple sniper team here to thin the herd of Black Hand. And Eclipse has potential for late game economy. Last game, he literally ran out of money. Right now, he's got a decent amount in the main, in the natural, but does he have a third? Does he have some way to transition? It's going to be mass infantry versus this juggernaut wall. Sonic Emitter gets deployed. He's got a couple of specters as well, at least one specter. And it's mass shredder turrets versus these juggernauts versus this Sonic Emitter. If he can keep Bike Rush busy for long enough, he might be able to close the distance and clean up the juggernauts. He might just need to commit to the attack and go all in to kill those jugs. Hammerhead cycling around to the left side, looking for an opportunity to snipe this Spectre. They're not going to commit to the attack. Mantises are here. Harvester getting targeted. Bike Rush owns looking for the opening. Meanwhile, on the right side of the map, that Marv is cleared out almost that entire field. Bike Rush owns is going to go for the long distance harvest. Mantis does manage to clean up one of the hammerheads, but zone troopers on the ground do clean up two of the Mantises. Bike Rush owns getting the kill on the anti air of Eclipse. Eclipse trying to push in against the Juggernauts. The Juggernauts marching their way forward, and Bike Rush owns will steal a load and a half of Tiberium. The MCV falls, three juggernauts explode in sync. A fourth gets added to the pile of the dead as the specters line them up one after another. The specters spreading out to try and land their shots and the juggernauts not quite able to advance on forward. They've killed the MCV and now the hammerheads will clear out the specters. Bike Rush Owns has nearly broken the front line of Eclipse on the west side of the map. The MCV does get sold off or go down. Eclipse on the right side. Not much army, not much strength. Bike Rush Owns moving forward. The MCV redeploying. He's in range of Eclipse's refinery. And now Eclipse is back at the money problem that he was at last game. He's got no MCV, and he's going to have to try and pull... Well, he's got an MCV over on the right side of the map somewhere. Or he should have an MCV on the right side of the map somewhere. But as this game transitions, Bike Rush Owns is going to have a fresh, full third field that he can harvest off of. He's got the higher tech army. He's got the epic unit, and Eclipse has uh, got very little left on the map under his control. He's got very little Tiberium to be able to build an army that can beat this late game GDI and Bike Rush Owns has been playing careful enough that he's got a lot of his units left over from earlier in the game. A couple of juggernauts staying back home, decent amount of watchtowers as well. Five watchtowers could potentially sell some of those off if Bike Rush needs the extra cash. Refinery gets established by Bike Rush and it's a nuke by Eclipse. Okay. Temple of Nod, but uh, I think that is a fake Temple of Nod for Eclipse. It doesn't have Master Computer Countermeasures, and I think the Decoy Temple of Nod is just a funny joke here from Eclipse. Eclipse does establish one first refinery on the third field, and he does actually get a decent amount of cash from that. Second refinery does get established, so he's got a bit more money to go around. Bike Rush Owns sniping another Blue Tiberium Harvester, and Eclipse has lost so many Harvesters at that Blue Tib field. It has definitely not been worth it for him overall. The mistakes are adding up for Eclipse, and the result is a late game army that's non-existent, an economy that is thin, and a hope of victory that is minuscule. Yeah, send another harvester in. Yeah, no, the harvesters—they're free. They don't you those you don't need those to win. And he does get it out of there. He does manage to escape. Mantis on the north side of the map for some reason. That harvester is just hanging out. Bike Rush owns going for mass APC in case it's a man spam for the win transition. 
I don't know why there's a mantis over here. It might be hunting hammerheads, but honestly, at this point, who knows? It's mass bike buggy. Bike Rush Jones is going to try and just defend against the swarm as Eclipse comes in. And it's going to be one hammerhead dead, one juggernaut dead, two and three go down. Eclipse just targeting unit after unit and trying to avoid as many of the juggernaut shots as possible. This is not a game winning strategy, but he does get two harvesters there. Three more harvesters are potentially exposed, but no, Bike Rush owns watchtowers are strong enough to push back Eclipse, and Eclipse loses almost all of the bikes in that assault. It was an attempt. I don't know if it was a nice attempt, but it was an attempt nonetheless. That harvester almost down to half health from just that random rifle squad, and that is it. The 3-0 goes to Bike Rush Owns. It's going to have to be a reverse sweep from Eclipse to keep his hope alive. And uh, it seems pretty unlikely. But let's jump into game number four. And it will be decided here on Atacama Road for game number four. Either the tournament road ends here or the comeback begins. And it'll start with this guy as the green GDI in the south. Give it up for Eclipse. And as the red GDI in the north, this is Bike Rush Owns. Eclipse not finding success with Black Hand or Mark of Cain will bring himself to play GDI. That is a lot of riflemen coming out from Bike Rush Owns. And it is going to be two riflemen on the side of Eclipse. Uh, he's going to commit to that attack, which obviously, if he could have, he would have wanted to escape with one of those squads. But he will see a massive anti-scout coming out from Bike Rush Owns. And uh, whether it's a real anti-scout in that Bike Rush Owns is actually doing something that he doesn't want scouted, or if it's Bike Rush Owns just trying to get into his opponent's head, it's hard to tell. Bike Rush Owns could honestly be doing either one of them. But actually, it doesn't even really matter because Eclipse is going to get a Rifleman Squad into Bike Rush's base anyways. And I guess Bike Rush Owns would have to pull a Harvester if he really wanted to deal with that. But it is going to be a second refinery at an exactly normal time. Eclipse is going to see that there are three Harvesters just like normal and uh, Eclipse was forced to draft a watchtower a little bit unfortunately there for Eclipse but he will be able to sell that off and I guess run down those riflemen some other way Bike Rush Owns does deploy a foxhole and start chipping away at that power plant a little bit annoying and Eclipse is gonna try and run over these riflemen uh, it's not exactly an ideal strategy using your harvesters in this way, but it is one way to deal with the mass riflemen that Bike Rush built at the start of the game. And Eclipse will chase those away for now. Foxhole for a foxhole, power plant for a power plant, an annoyance for an annoyance. As Eclipse is dealing with his own power plant foxhole back at home, it looks like the tip spike is also going to take a little bit of damage here. And Eclipse will eventually have to deal with that double rifleman inside of that sieve structure. First Harvester is transferring over. And it looks like Bike Rush Owns did steal some of the blue Tiberium with his first Harvester at his natural. Why? What is that? Why did you drive all the way to the Blue Tiberium and then not claim any of it? Eclipse is going to get most of a... He's going to get a full load of Blue Tiberium. It is that slow-growing shared field in the middle. Watchtower and Pitbulls will eventually break this foxhole. And Bike Rush Owns is fairly well set up to go into the mid-game. This is a map with a third field for each player. And they can take that quite nicely, dividing up the map along the road through the center. Or, I mean, it could be divided, I guess, going the other way. 
either way. Bike Roshones has a couple of pit bulls coming down the left side of the map. Rocket Squads and a couple of riflemen down the right side of the map. It's going to be pits versus pits into the main or into the natural. They go for each side. Bike Roshones actually cuts back through the middle. He's going to hope to head off the pit bulls of Eclipse. And he doesn't commit to his own attack on the other side of the map. He's just hoping to shut down Eclipse's pit bulls. Trying to block them off with a tip silo, but the damage is spread a little bit too thin. And Eclipse needs one more rocket. He doesn't get it. Barely, barely, he does not get it. As Bike Rush owns, saves a Harvester with, I think, the thinnest margin of health possible. And at this point, it's a good I, it's a good thing that Bike Rush owns clean up that Rifleman squad that was over by that power plant because otherwise, if that Rifleman squad ejected, it may legitimately get a kill on that Harvester. Orca Strike tags the Harvester, cleans up half of the health of one of these rocket squads maybe. No, it actually doesn't touch the rocket squads at all. And it's going to be a multi-MCV play from both players. The uh, Tier 3 is here. Sonic emitters will be coming online. And it is the course of things for each player. Pitbull's coming in. Bike Rush owns looking for an opportunity. He's got the strike with the Orcas. Catches one Harvester with the Orcas. Gets a second with the Pitbulls. And Bike Rush owns clearing out the main base of Eclipse so that he doesn't have to worry about transferring pesky Harvesters. He can just let them die here in his main base. Last shot doesn't get the kill, unfortunately, for Bike Rush owns, but he's done a fair amount else. The tip spike getting dangerously low on health. Eclipse taking a page out of Bike Rush's book. Quite literally, these guys are getting as close to mirrored as you can. A couple of rocket squads transferring over for Eclipse. He's going to look to potentially do some damage to that Reclamator Hub. Okay, a little bit of a little bit of a delay there. And Bike Rush owns will be able to deal with this attack quite easily. Harvester may even get a couple of kills here as it transfers over, and that is going to be it for Bike Rush's defense. Eclipse does not sell off. Oh, his tip silos might actually be full. Is uh, is Eclipse full uh, flush with cash? That's weird that his Marv wasn't harvesting for the first couple of seconds there. But uh, it is now. It did get halfway through the field before it finally decided to start harvesting. And actually, Bike Rush Owns does kill that with just a Rifleman. That's pretty sad for Eclipse. Two Juggernauts do go down. Sonic emitters are now going to town on each other. And it looks like it's going to be Bike Rush running from this natural expansion, losing a couple of more harvesters here as Eclipse takes a page out of Bike Rush's book and tries the multi MCV Sonic emitter ultimate harass tactic himself. Juggernauts being packaged along with this attack. Juggernauts here in the defense for Bike Rush owns, but the Sonic emitters need to get a little bit closer to them. There's the pack up of the MCV, the War Factory a bit far away now, and it looks like Eclipse is going to be going to war. Juggernaut to Juggernaut, Sonic emitter to Sonic emitter, but it's going to be a Marv on the side of Bike Rush, and meanwhile Eclipse's Marv is still Marvisting the field in the south. The juggernaut of, of the Marv of Bike Rush Owns is going to have to back off. The MCV gets its laser fence. Repositions kind of on the north side of that field. One juggernaut down for Eclipse. Orca's coming in for Bike Rush Owns. He wants to clean this game up. Clean this series up with a clean 4-0 sweep. Sonic Emitter comes down. Eclipse with a double War Factory as the follow-up. Sonic Emitter is getting deployed freshly from from both players, honestly, but the Juggernauts get the kill. The Marv goes down, and Eclipse still has his Marv paying his bills at the other expansion. Bike Rush owns chewing through the field over at his third location, and Eclipse is going to have to keep up the pressure. This is his main front. This is the main area where his army is. What little army he still has out on this field. He gets the kill on an engineer. The watchtowers help burn down those juggernauts, and Eclipse might actually be doing it. He got the kill on the Marv. The juggernauts are in lower numbers for Bike Rush owns, and the one MCV, if he can clean that up, 
up, he gets the kill, and Bike Rush owns cannot outbuild Sonic Emitters two to one. Juggernauts from Eclipse are clearing a bigger and bigger patch of Bike Rush's base. No second Marv, it's gonna be into the double airfield transition. Juggernauts don't shoot up. Juggernauts crossing over. Four Juggernauts here for Eclipse. This is the best shot at taking a game that he is going to get. Rifleman doing a little bit of damage to that MCV. MCV not too worried about them, and uh, hopefully he's got a Sonic Emitter queued up that he can clean up some of these Harvesters. Double Sonic Emitter as these Harvesters run for the hill. The Hammerheads are going to engage them straight away. Power Plants coming online, trying desperately to get that, that Space Command uplink back online so that Bike Rush Owns has a chance at EMP, has a chance at shutting down this aggression. Massive Juggernaut shots coming in from Bike Rush Owns. He's going to be able to clear out the con yard of Eclipse. One MCB will go down. Shockwave artillery going to be firing off and it will slow down this assault. Catches the MCB. The MCB deploys just barely in time. Double engineer goes down as well and Bike Rush owns holds on to this corner of the map. The Sonic emitters get pushed back. The air towers get pushed back as well and Bike Rush owns loses his main, loses his natural to the Marvesting forces of Eclipse but he holds on to his third. His double airfield gets sold off. I assume it's a war factory coming up next. No, it's gonna be a command post to go perhaps back into the airfield. Harvester hunting is now the name of the game for Bike Rush Owns. And a couple of these harvesters are completely undefended. Air tower gets established, but it's a little too little damage to uh, really push away that those hammerhead numbers. Juggernaut's closing in. Bike Rush Owns is looking to just swap places with Eclipse. Three slingshots being added on. The double War Factory got sold off to a single War Factory for Eclipse, and he's at least got that much going for him. Zone Troopers get called in. Bike Rush Owns clears out the base of Eclipse, and one random Firehawk comes through with anti-air missiles, clearing up a couple of the Hammerheads, and Bike Rush Owns is not executing this attack as cleanly as he would like. It was a triple MCV play from Eclipse, and he still has two MCVs roaming around the map. Power plants going down. Juggernauts are uncontested. Bike Rush Owns didn't pack up his MCV, so this is not a base trade situation. He is trapped here with these Juggernauts closing in on his base, getting closer and closer. Rifleman hunting down those zone troopers. Engineers getting sniped. Lowly Rifleman from Eclipse finding damage, finding use against Bike Rush Owns. Hammerhead's coming in for the defense. Juggernaut's clearing out Harvesters as they go for the transfer. Slingshots clear the skies, and it's going to be up to the Marv and the Watchtowers to clean up this infantry horde of Bike Rush Owns. One Watchtower falls. A second Watchtower is eliminated, but two more get added into the mix. It's the Hydra of Watchtowers. And no, Bike Rush Owns is not going to be able to stop Eclipse with that little damage. The MCV does fall, but these five juggernauts behind the Marv stand strong, and Eclipse might find the first win in his series against Bike Rush Owns. It's a triple barracks as the fallback. Bike Rush Owns, his MCV is so close to death, and Eclipse takes the game. I can't believe it. Eclipse in a GDI mirror beats Bike Rush Owns on Atacama Road, taking us to a game five, which takes us to pipeline problems here for game number five. Bike Rush's map choice, but in the north, the green GDI. This is Eclipse. And on the south side, as the red GDI, this is Bike Rush Owns. Bike Rush Owns with a perfect score. 8-0 and o in 1v1s in East versus West. And now he is 8-1. and one. No, actually, he's 7-1. and one. 
Seven and one. I was thinking it was five and three, but it's actually four and three, which is, you know, a best of seven, not a best of nine last week. Eclipse is going to get the drop on this rifleman squad of Bike Rush Owns. A couple of units will manage to survive. And Eclipse actually gets the foxholes in a couple of good positions all throughout the map. Middle, center, and right. Uh, left, center, and right is what I meant to say. And okay, this is a double Orca airfield rush all in. This is a legitimate anti-scout coming in here from Eclipse. And we'll see if these eight Orcas are going to be able to break Bike Rush Owns. We've seen this sort of thing before. Bike Rush Owns going for a couple of rocket squads over at the blue field is probably the best thing for him. Bike Rush Owns has the crane and the MCV. So it's going to be a lot of runs before these Orcas are done five orcas head out six seven eight will probably be added on and cycled over to the left side of the map these are going to be diving on harvesters and trying to line up as much damage as they possibly can and let's see if eclipse can keep his tournament hopes alive the orcas showing up and bike rush owns now knows what's going on eclipse is going to be able to find one harvester kill bike rush owns starting to split the harvesters and eclipse starting to split the orcas I think Eclipse is a little bit confused as to where all of the harvesters are. He completely missed the two that were at the refinery, and now Eclipse is wasting precious time flying all over the map looking for harvesters that are over at the blue field. Bike Rush owns getting additional time to prepare for this, and he knows when he sees five orcas that it is a double airfield. It is all in, and now Bike Rush owns has basically already defended it. Uh, he's got, uh, he can drop a refinery on his main base. His Tib Spike is going to get captured. But he's now got a refinery on his main base. So there are now three harvesters that have to be sniped basically in one go. And Eclipse is not grabbing this Tib Spike. Every second that goes by is more cash in Bike Rush's bank and less cash in Eclipse's. Eclipse gets the lowest value harvester. He is going to eventually get that tip spike. There we go. Only an extra couple hundred go to Bike Rush Owns. Hammerheads as the follow-up. Okay, this is working for Eclipse. He's opened up a bit of an opportunity, but I think at some point he's probably going to have to just dive on the harvesters, and I don't know if he has an option other than suiciding some of his orcas. I don't think he can get the kills if he doesn't sacrifice the orcas. Orca Strike going to be coming in. That's a great way to lead in. Double air tower, though. Those AA batteries are so tough to crack with hammerheads and orcas. Bike Rush Owns now has three AA batteries. The Orca Strike coming in. Bike Rush Owns is going to take a little bit of... Oh, basically no splash damage on that end. Well, the numbers are pretty thin here for Eclipse. He's loading the hammerhead up. That was weird. That was a weird glitch. Uh, he's loading the hammerhead up with any loose rifleman that he has, and that's a good use of pulling any rifleman out of foxholes just to be able to load them into hammerheads. And, I mean, he's not going to be getting AP ammo, although it probably would have been worth it to get AP ammo at this point. He's got five orcas, but every second that he delays is just more time that Bike Rush has to prepare. Double tip spike is nice. No AP ammo and no way out of it. So it is do or die. One more harvester does get claimed. But you kind of need to kill all of the harvesters for this build to work. If any harvesters survive, then Bike Rush Owns can progress. And Bike Rush Owns is the one with the war factory. He's the one with the comeback potential to, you know, get another MCV and do whatever he wants with it. Which I assume Bike Rush Owns sold his MCV. And he did. He will indeed take the uh, take the tip spike on the other side of the map. So he actually takes Eclipse's tip spike away from him. Eclipse's harvester running away desperately from these orcas. Eclipse did have a good idea that it was coming. This attack was on its way, and he's got no defense. So that's it. The G to the G as Bike Rush Owns needs to kill this Tib Spike, and that is the last thing that Eclipse has going for him. 
Bikershones could have actually just walked an engineer over there, built an extra engineer, and then just walked over there, and that would be game. Orcas get smashed in the middle of the map, and if the double airfield all-in is uh, not a build that tends to work at the highest levels. In this particular case, it is also not going to work as Eclipse is going to find himself 1-4 down in this best of seven, and Bike Rush Owns is going to take the series. The GG gets called, and Bike Rush Owns finishes East versus West with a perfect score for Team West. A 6-2-0. Team East showing up phenomenally well in so many series. Just not in the 1v1s against Bike Rush Owns. And unfortunately, we didn't get to see Phoenix versus Eclipse, which probably would have been a bit more of a competitive series, but... The end of the tournament would have been the same. It just might have been 5-1 to one instead of 6-0. to zero. Team East playing so, so well, but Team West just playing that much better. And that will do it for East versus West. Big thanks to Big Mole. Big thanks to Ender bringing their cash in to create this event. And, of course, big cheers to Big Mole for organizing, for coming up with the idea, for getting the players together and doing all of that. And thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and this is Cyber, signing out.